unidentifiable flying object. <laughs> UFO continues to be a mystery. Wasn't alone in space. Sightings of UFOs. Something out there. <laughs> Close enough to be observed. <laughs> what could it be? It can only be one thing. A UFO. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of UFO No, the show that separates science fact from science fiction the best that we can. This is your break from the propaganda, which is abounding. Uh, the treasonous politicians that are worse than ever. And uh, and get away from the bad news a little bit. We did talk a lot about, about some bad news stuff in this one. Uh, Mr. C's back. Yes. Welcome back. Feeling better, no, no my friend. No more sickness for That's the love right. of God. <laughs> That's right. Hopefully not, man. Yes. Hopefully not. It's all but, those kids, man. Well, yeah, dude. Yeah. It's uh, so... This show that we have for you, this episode that we have for you, I am so excited. Uh, We had a a while back, it was like episode 42. Uh, We're on 152 now, so so 110 episodes ago. Holy crap. um, (laughs) I had on Alan fucking Greenfield. (laughs) And I say Alan fucking Greenfield because in our first interview, one of the first things he said to me was when I said, uh, introduce yourself, you know, people. He says, well, at one point, someone introduced me as Alan fucking Greenfield. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God, I love it. So that's the title of the episode, of course, with all the asterisks because people get, you know, their panties in a wad. But, um, yes, Alan Greenfield. And uh, if you're unfamiliar with Alan Greenfield, he wrote The Secret Cipher of the Ufonauts, The Complete Cipher of the uh, complete, yeah, complete cipher of the uh, UFO, you, Uf- you Thank you, <laughs> and uh, as well as uh, the his new book that we talked a lot oh, about, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the secret of the Black Lodge, or the secret, is that what it was? Yeah. The secret of the Black Lodge. Yeah, I think so. Hold on, I got a, I got a name for it. Hold on, I got the name. I got the name. Hold on, I got the name. The Secrets of the Black Lodge. Yes. That's what yeah. it was. And holy shit! Yeah, <laughs> I mean, look as usual. I had a whole page, uh, page and a half, two pages of questions, notes, all kinds of stuff, because it's Alan fucking Greenfield, (laughs) and I didn't want to be unprepared, and I didn't use any of them. Uh, aside from the name of the books, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was the only thing I used the notes for. I think we tried to ask him a question, but we got veered the other direction. Well, so he, I mean, look, it was fine. He is a force of his own. Yes, and and, and I mean, how do you direct? Alan Greenfield. You don't. No. You let him go anywhere he wants to go, and that's what we did. And, I mean, I think we did two and a half hours almost. Yeah. Oh, phenomenal. I love that man. I mean, I, he is so funny. His <laughs> sense of humor is unbelievable. He's so knowledgeable. He knows all kinds of shit about all kinds of shit. <laughs> and it's the coolest shit. I yes. mean, we're, we, you know, he, he, he was around Jack Parsons and L. Ron Hubbard. This guy was around um, the early days of Stanton Friedman Mm -hmm. and, 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 and the UFO community. He was there. We talked about in the episode during the Condon report era, you know, he was at one of these UFO conventions where Condon showed up. Yeah. An amazing Randy. He was. (laughs) (laughs) And yeah, I mean the names he's dropping. Yeah in this episode is is just like holy shit we're talking about the golden calves of ufology Mm -hmm. you know these are the ogs and he was right in the thick of it and man we got into the ufo topic we got into his books of course Mm -hmm. we got into some of the political shit that's going on which i never expect to go into but we did um, and, and of course this black lodge that I knew nothing about, I thought it was a branch of like the Masonic type thing, but boy, was I wrong. I mean, it was so much more than that. And, and it was incredibly enlightening. Mm-hmm. And then what was great is towards the end, we, we wrapped it all up in positivity yes. and God damn it. That's my favorite. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> that's my favorite. It, it was God damn it. It was so good. I, I'm literally, it might be the weed, but I feel like I'm high 
just from that conversation, it could be the weed. But anyways, but either way, it was a good conversation. Yeah, um, unbelievable. And I love Alan Greenfield so much. I can't, I can't tell you how much love I have in my heart for this man and the work he does and his perspective, his outlook. I, I love it, and and it's like as as a lot of times that happens on this show. I have a lot of rapport. We have a lot of rapport with the guest and it comes across as though we're just, we've known each other for a long time, but with Alan, it, it truly feels like I truly feel like I've known him my whole life. I just, I love him to death. And so anyway, so I I am thrilled, thrilled and honored uh, to bring you Alan fucking (laughs) Greenfield. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. (laughs) Hell yeah. (laughs) <laughs> nice. The men in black out of yeah. there. Yeah, the, the, the dancing girls can stay. <laughs> yeah, we'll keep those. Uh, there, yes. <laughs> that that one should wait for me in the boudoir. Yes. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Good idea. Good idea, Alan. <laughs> yeah, well, something to do after the show. Yeah, right? several. Yeah. It sounds like several <laughs> things to do after the show. Yes, indeed. Uh, not all at the same time. I'm getting on it. Here. <laughs> You're only one man. You're only one, one man. Spread it out. Time. That's right. Spread the love out like butter. That's right. That's, that's right. That's what I always say. Cover every piece. <laughs> yeah. Take a stick of butter in there something i saw in a movie <laughs> how are you my friend i'm maintaining well that's today good. i got the latest covid booster oh uh, how do you feel yeah you know people say they have these adverse reactions i've never had a bad reaction to a vaccine good. that's good H- however i know it's possible because uh, one of my sons who has well, a, a mild case of psoriasis, mm. which is hardly deadly, you know, mm-hmm. but when he took the uh, uh, vaccine, uh, he had to go to the doctor because it got really bad. For oh, a wow. Weeks. And yeah, I mean, there, apparently the medicines for that are immunosuppressant medicines. And, I see. <clears throat> I mean, it, it goes together, you know, but... Uh, yeah, yeah. But ne- I've never had a, a problem with it. Well, good. That's good. I know I hear mixed reviews. I mean, I hear a lot of things. Um, me, personally, my my wife, she's vaccinated. She's in the health industry, so she had to. And uh, which a lot of things, they have to get a, a flu shot and all that stuff. But um, same thing. She didn't get any adverse effects. She didn't get any of the boosters, um, but she took the one and and uh, and she felt fine. Um, so, I mean, it's it's hard to know for sure. I mean, all you can do is do what's best for you. Exactly. Well, you know? where I live, it's practically compulsory because... Uh, there are a lot of old folks here. Not mm. me. You yeah, no, of course. Yeah. You're young. I'm, I'm in my youthful vigor. That's <laughs> Look at that. Look, Look at that. those guns. Oh. Welcome, oh. To, welcome to the gun show. Oh, should have used the other arm. Are you licensed to carry those heavy hitters? Good Lord, Alan. You don't need a license to carry anything in Georgia. Oh, there you nice. go. That Georgia, we were actually just talking about that, where yep. you were from, where yep. you were residing, maintaining, as it were. Well, in where I live now, ironically, and I didn't know this when I got on the wait list for this rent control department. Oh. It's three blocks from the house I grew up in. Oh, wow. Really? No kidding. Yeah, I mean, what are the odds? I've lived well, all over the world and yeah. went to school in Arizona and still, you know. Yeah. You came back to the Shire. <laughs> I guess so. That's great. That's great. So how have you been? This is the second time. I First of all, I have to tell you, my friend, I am honored to have you back on the show. I brag all the time that I got you on the show in the first place. I'm like, I had Alan fucking Greenfield on the show. And I remember very specifically, you told me that uh, an interviewer or somebody had announced you that way at one point. And uh, I think that was Greg Newkirk's uh, work for 
the one and only convention he invited me to. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, I had to title the episode that. I think that goes way back to, like, episode 42 or something. And uh, now we're on episode 152. So quite a, yeah. quite, a, quite, a bit, quite a bit along the line, my friend. Well, let's put it this way. If yeah. I'm still around 10 years from now, have me again. I hope we don't and have I'll to wait that long. Yeah. And I'll sit there like this. <laughs> I've noticed the older I get, the more I look like, uh, what's his name? The uh, uh, senator from Kentucky, not Rand Paul. I would never. <laughs> I'd, I'd do myself in. Sure. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, what is his name? He's the head Republican in the Senate. Oh. And he has these episodes. And I look more and more like. What is his name? Is it Chuck Schumer? No. No, no, no. no. He's the. Uh, a, oh, the other guy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Mitch, Mitch McConnell. Oh, Mitch McConnell. Yeah, Mitch McConnell yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> Let me just tell you something, Alan. You are far better looking yes. than Mitch McConnell, yes. okay? He looks like he looks like a snapping turtle. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? He looks like what? a snapping turtle. You do not. You look great. Yeah. You look great. <laughs> All the comfort that makeup and hair dye can give you. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Wonderful. Wonderful. So look, man, let's 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 talk about your right off the bat, let's talk about your new book. I have a new book? You have a new book, right? From twenty twenty three. Twenty twenty three. Is it this year? Your background's Ooh. kinda blocking out your universe. Look at you're gone. <laughs> There you go. There it is. There's secrets of the real black lodge revealed, yes. revealed. They're all here. All well, the actually, pages. They're not all here. We stopped at 350 pages or something because we didn't want it to be a fifty dollar book or something. And, oh uh, sure, yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, so there are things that didn't make it into the book that I would have liked to have had in there. But nevertheless, it's pretty comprehensive given the fact that. Prior to this book, you have to go back to something like 1920 to find another book that even seriously references uh, the Black Lodge. Hmm. Technically, this is the third volume of the Secret Cipher trilogy, which, oh. uh, I mean, it was 10 years between Secret Cipher of the Euphonauts and Secret Rituals of the Men in Black, and that they were combined by my current publisher. Their idea, not mine, uh, <laughs> into the complete secret cipher of the Euphodots, yeah. which just became a lie about a month ago when this third volume came out. But I, <laughs> I am negotiating uh, incorporating this into it. But of course, collectors will want yeah, uh, the of course. individual copy. And uh, I don't know. I reread everything that's in it. Oh, and, good! Wow. I'm impressed <laughs> with, with what I had to say. Good, I good. might argue with it, but that's <laughs> yeah. Well, that's yeah. that shows that your opinion's evolving, though. So that's good. Your knowledge is evolving always. always. That's right. Yeah, that's always good. That's always good. So, so, yeah. so, let's talk about the Black Lodge. If I mean, obviously, we want people to go read the book "Secrets of the Black Lodge," but. Uh, why don't you explain, first of all, let's do this. Let, for those that haven't uh, seen the original episode, what shame on you, but go <laughs> check it out. Uh, but for those that aren't familiar, uh, it, who are you? What do you do? How did you get started? And then let's, uh, let's talk about the Black Lodge. I am Alan fucking Green. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I kick ass. Yes, you do. All the time. <laughs> And I do not have Mitch McConnell moments. <laughs> good. That's good. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. He's, he's stuck. <laughs> the video oh, that was just the camera. <laughs> I'm fine. It's just the camera. <laughs> I'm feeling kind of blurry. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I love it. But uh, let's see. What else do you say about me? Uh, most people do an introduction, and if I do, and if I talk about myself, that gets sounds vainglorious. Well, before Hellier, this is what I usually say. Yes. Before Hellier, I was almost obscure. Since Hellier, 
I'm almost famous. <laughs> and you're talking about the show Hell Year, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. That was a great show. That's actually where I first heard about you was Hell Year. You and about 10,000 other people that suddenly discovered Secret Cipher, the Euphonauts. And oh. the rest, as they say, is history. <laughs> well, let's go into a little bit of that history. So last time you came on the show, we had talked about your connection to um, ritual sex magic, right? And that takes you back... Did we talk about that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we sure did. That's the 70s, man. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and how you you were like, you know, you came out of the Jack Parsons. Watch uh, the terminology came out. It has, <laughs> yeah. in that particular context, yes. a different connotation that I'm willing to go through. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, but you, like, came out of the Jack Parsons, the L. Ron Hubbard type stuff, right? And you were you were kind of connected to them, were you not? Well, yeah. I mean, we were. Uh, I suppose you could say I was never a Scientologist. I've always been opposed okay. to Scientology, but I did spend twenty hellacious years in the OTO, which was yes. Pars Parsons' uh, organization as well, and uh, we occupied similar. Uh, positions and that we were both lodge masters there and both eventually high ranking and both quit yeah. <laughs> and or got fired. I think it was somewhere in between really. <laughs> somewhere between quit and fired. <laughs> yeah. 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 So why, but, why was it uh, horrendous? <sighs> if you want to get into it. No, I, 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 I mostly, I don't want to get into it. I'll just say this. Yeah. Uh, because it's apropos, it segues well to the Black Lodge. And oh, okay. Not, not call it a Black Lodge, but what happens in advanced magical work is if you progress in it, and most people don't, but uh, for those who do, you reach a point of development where one of two things happens and it probably depends on your baseline character which nobody uh you know if you want to be an airline pilot i imagine you get all kind of psych tests mm. to you know people that are prone to crashing planes probably don't <laughs> yeah don't make it into the pilot world uh but uh, <laughs> i would hope not <laughs> but there are no uh no such tests that i know of in the uh, occult slash magical universe. Uh, and why do you, you think that's so important? Because of what I'm about to oh, say. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Although, if you want to pontificate, it's your show. No, no, no I it. just want to make sure I, I, <laughs> on that I got your you on it. Air. <laughs> <laughs> I just want Let to make me. sure you go into it, that's all. Irish breakfast tea and nothing else. Honest. Okay. I, I wouldn't lie to you. You, you don't have to lie to kick it, Alan. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to lie. I've got a beverage here. It's okay. We love you regardless. <laughs> what? I, so, oh, yes. <laughs> That's CBD. Oh, good. Good for you. No, it's Irish breakfast tea. Makes me want to join the IRA. <laughs> Sing Rising of the Moon. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um 20 horrendous years yeah well <laughs> i was into it at the beginning but yeah. what happens is if you advance and again in that system and a lot of others it's very hierarchical but most people never get beyond the the preliminary degrees mm. and then they leave they also leave their money behind, but they leave. <laughs> uh, uh, actually, those people who are in the revolving door of those orders uh, provide, as far as I'm aware, most of the funding for the whole organization. Wow. Hmm. Uh, uh, there are supposedly uh, uh, annual dues for the upper members that are very high mm. but 
in fact, if you, and you almost invariably do have a grand lodge job, you're dues exempt. So oh. uh, when I allowed myself to fall out of favor, I was basically putting myself on the uh, no longer dues exempt list. <laughs> oh, so I, I, see, could, yeah. I couldn't have stayed after all because I couldn't afford, you know, a thousand dollars a year or something yeah. at that level. Uh, but you know, it's, it's, uh, the, the, the heavy lifting is done by the people in the primary degrees there. But those handful of people who advanced beyond that, they either really do uh, sort of uh, advance spiritually, but they're also being advanced with all of these titles and degrees and uh did you know that I'm a prince of Jerusalem? <laughs> Are you really? <laughs> I am. But if I went to Jerusalem right now and said, I am a prince of Jerusalem. <laughs> well, <Sorry>. over <laughs> my head from the top of the Temple Mount, the Muslims would throw rocks at me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And if I ran to, the, to my fellow Jews at the base of the mountain, They'd throw stones at <laughs> friends of Jerusalem. I, I think you're the Messiah. No, I just uh, used to be in the OTO. Ah, throw rocks! <laughs> More rocks! <laughs> More rocks! So is it like so, Freemasonry then, kind of, where you have like 32 degrees and you go above that to 33 degrees? You have to choose of the four books. Is that kind of or similar? in the right of Memphis? 90 mm -hmm. degrees. Oh wow! Or the right of Memphis Mitzrayim. Uh, I think it's now 100 degrees, used to be 97. Wow. I don't know anybody that works each of those degrees in order because most people don't live that long. Yeah, <laughs> it takes a long time to get there. Yeah, one a year, and then on your 100th birthday, <laughs> A, your life insurance policy no longer charges anything, <laughs> and B, you get to be a free member for the rest of your life. <laughs> hey, nice perk. And nice perk. Fun, yeah. Bad. yeah, right. <laughs> so what happens is some people like me stay very sincere about it. And part of the sincerity is doing what I still do without benefit of orders or, you know, their uh, play for pay organization, which is uh, – to empower people so that they too, if they're so inclined and are willing to put in the work, can, uh, so to speak, ascend. Uh, but there is another trend, and it goes with the territory of being hierarchical and having uh, a grand poobah for life. Uh, I mean, you can use whatever term you want. Uh, I'm not there are things I have against mainstream Freemasonry, but one of them is not that they're undemocratic. They are, they elect a lodge master every year. Hmm. In the OTO, if you attain to a certain level, you're there for the rest of your life. Hmm. And uh, uh, that is a bit. Uh, 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 how should I put it? Too European for me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. To be a lifer. Who made you king? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, awesome, right? <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, when I first joined, there was a much smaller membership than there is now. Although uh, the bar bar chart is saying it's headed back in that direction mm -hmm. under its wise leadership, but. Um, what I was trying to get to was some people get all puffed up by hierarchy, and therein lies the core of the temptation to become advanced adepts with, for lack of any term, sorry, George Lucas, the dark <laughs> side yeah, yeah. of Sith the Lord. force. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so you become a Sith Lord. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. by name, you're a Prince of Jerusalem or uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Most, uh, most Wise Sovereign. I also had that one. 
But I discovered I wasn't sovereign, and I already knew I wasn't all that wise, you know, <laughs> let alone most wise. Sure. So, uh, you know, they, if you take those things too seriously, uh, my way of dealing with them is anything that comes my way in the way of empowerments, I pass it along to others without any kind of, you know, restrictions or tests, figuring uh, you probably get a few bad apples, but for the most part, people are going to use these things fairly responsibly. I have the same attitude towards nuclear weapons. I do keep a supply, <laughs> and if people ask for them, and they're polite, yeah. I give them the weapon. <laughs> there you go. Good. I don't care uh, if they're wearing a burnous or they're Russian and say they need it to solve their Ukrainian problem. <laughs> I just want them to be nice to me. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, you're so generous, so Alan. You're so generous. I, I, I'm a person with heart. That's great. That's good. Good That's for you. Well, heart. H e a r. Well, and uh, you know, sharing is caring. That's so, right. uh, so truly, you are a very caring individual. Yeah. yeah, they're probably lining up at the door now. I was kidding. <laughs> One of the symptoms of the Black Lodge is no sense of humor whatever uh, so i sort of see the humor in practically everything uh, it's like purported uh, wc fields last line which is on his tombstone better here than in philadelphia <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's the, that's just it. A good sense of humor, you know, don't take yourself or anything else too seriously and you'll probably live longer. Yeah. Well, the black lodge, uh, it's actual adepts like the secret chiefs of the third order, which are the adepts who, uh, for their sake, to use the Kabbalistic term, the world is maintained. Uh, they're no longer, they start out as human beings. They're not aliens, although they're mistaken for that sometimes. They're, uh, in both cases, they are ascended masters, mm. to use the term that the theosophists use. The Great White Brotherhood, a term I don't like. The Great White Brotherhood, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like uh, one of those organizations with the guys in sheets yeah, yeah, that are right the down the block from me, <laughs> the, the two guys. miles outside of Atlanta, where the old South still is the old South. <laughs> the guys that like hoods. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're hoods, too. all right. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> so, but, they, uh, so they're not a, they're not a friendly bunch, is what I'm gathering. They're against enlightenment. Oh, they're against that would, enlightenment. Because that would push people past their level. Because they'll only go so far. The secret chiefs are, well, the Buddhists would call them bodhisattvas, which is capable of entering into moksha or nirvana or whatever term you want for cosmic consciousness but who choose not to, even though they're no longer corporeal mortal beings, mm. but rather take a an oath that they will never enter into the positive absolute, to use Charles Schwartz's term, uh, until all sentient beings are brought to a level where they're capable of doing that. And... Uh, Knowing my neighbors, I would say that's a, a million-year commitment at minimum. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the the Black Lodge is just the opposite. They don't take any oaths, but they'll swear other people to them, you know, oh, to be loyal to them. And they want – they don't take that last step into the infinite probably because they're scared of it. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm not inside their – whatever passes for a head and <laughs> non-corporeal beings. Uh, but they are quite advanced adepti who have unlimited funding because they can manipulate currencies. They know they're outside of time, so they really know what's going to happen. They're outside say, of time? 
Absolutely. Hmm. So are the secret chiefs. I mean, the, I don't know the outcome of all this, but they do. So what does that they, mean that they're outside of time? Is in they're, they're literally stepping out of the flow of time to perceive it? Yeah, uh, they were human. But once they reach that exalted stage where they can choose to go on or choose to help humanity or turn against the human race out of a basically a lust for power or to remain in power or whatever. They have all kinds of communion with other dimensions and uh, uh, much more advanced uh, beings. The ones that are taken to be E.T. Mm-hmm. phoning home, you know. So um, mm-hmm. I personally think they're more uh, extra dimensional, uh, although that term is inadequate, um, rather than extra terrestrial from you know so well, they you, used to sorry. when i first got involved in ufos they, they said they came from mars uh i have yet to see a martian as our landers uh, crawl along the surface of that uh, <laughs> yeah. rather dead world if there are any martians we're probably descended from them that's what yeah. i've always thought yeah too. yeah well, that's just it. I mean, we've talked about before of how different would our own history of humanity look if we never excavated any of, of the Earth. So how different would our history look if we actually started excavating Mars? You know, like finding out what's underneath the surface. I bet it's going to look a lot different if we start digging. I mean, I'm not even convinced that what we're being shown by the rover. I mean, there, there's there been things that have come out that have said that NASA has been coloring images from Mars for decades. To oh, make, they have. To make it I look mean, red. that's so, not a rumor. They, yeah. they will cop to that, but they yeah. say they do it in order to compensate for the fact that these things are being digitally sent back yeah. uh, on a grayscale. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, they're not sending Polaroid <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> images. They're sending zeros and ones in a particular combination. But just as movies can be colorized, black and white movies, some people are opposed to that. My son in the movie industry, I think, well, last time I talked to him about it, he was opposed to it. I'm not. I think it's, you know, as long as the black and white original is maintained. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's uh, like I just recently saw one of my favorite science fiction movies from the Wayback Machine, The Earth versus the Flying Saucers, mm-hmm. and saw it for the first time, the colorized version. Free for nothing on YouTube. <laughs> so, That's awesome, yeah. Uh, and it was... It was it not only holds up, it is a definite enhancement. Yeah. And that's uh, uh, certainly that is what NASA does with each and every one of those images, because otherwise they would all be uh, black and white and a lot of shadows and things like that. So, for example, the color of the Martian sky is closer to the color of the sky here. Yeah, it's exactly. bluish. And bluish, that yeah. is... So uh, it looks very much think, like Arizona to me. Yeah, <laughs> true, right? And it probably feels like Arizona <laughs> in the winter time. Yeah, that's yeah. where I went to school, and uh, and that's where they have the Martian training environment yes, exactly. somewhere out, out in the Sonora Desert. Yeah, is it coincidence? And, I think not. <laughs> no, it's. <laughs> It's the attempt to be as faithful uh, to the Martian environment as they can be. But as you're pointing out, Mm -hmm. until somebody goes there with a shovel and starts digging, I mean, how much have we recovered of our past from archaeology, which has only existed for 120 years? The answer is not a lot that you can say with confidence and the mm-hmm. further back you go the less you can say sure uh, i don't i don't know if you followed this whole thing with homo nealdi nealdi mm. nelly yeah Nelly. Yeah. Whoa, yeah, nelly. Yeah. yeah i mean that is a fantastic discovery so fantastic that the scientific establishment has in muted terms said oh well that's being misinterpreted because yeah. the discoverer there is a as an 
archaeologists of impeccable credentials, so they can't quite say, oh, it's a hoax, oh, it's just amateurs, uh, you know, whatever. It's not. It's a whole different branch of the, hum- the human uh, line of descent, yeah. and it overlaps with the earliest, you know, homo sapiens sapiens. Yeah. And apparently they had advanced burial practices yeah. that even included leaving grave goods yeah. with their deceased. And that implies a lot about what these small brained hominids were capable of thinking about because yeah. you don't want to waste the one scraping tool that you have unless it was, you know, your kid who died while uh, doing their version of art, scratching on the wall. Yeah. Probably keeping score on the number of dead people <laughs> in the pit. Right? Yeah, probably. But nevertheless, yeah. Yeah. You know, something hit him on the head, so they well, and doesn't left that, it in his hand. Doesn't that push humanity or at least like a, a section of humanity, like another – cross species of of humanity like 500,000 years or something like that it's well, some crazy number that and other evidence from yeah uh paleo archaeology which mm-hmm. is paleontology of archaic bones of course you have to keep in mind a lot of time has passed since then yeah. and the amount of dna that they're able to extract is very small because The number of bones total that have been found since paleontology came into existence, uh, as creationists will be quick to point out to you, is quite small, actually. There probably wasn't a huge population of humans or proto-humans or whatever uh, the right term would be uh, at any time until, until the end of the last ice age. Mm. Uh, so it was a much smaller group and of those uh, I would presume many got eaten yeah <laughs> yeah yeah or you know or their uh, mortal remains have gone the way of mortal remains so they uh, uh, it's just by happenstance that they find here and there um, some evidence of uh early humans and some evidence of our related hominid uh, uh, type beings like uh, in the past five years there's been a total revision of what the Neanderthals were all about they used to be depicted as total brutes but apparently although they only survived by uh, shall we say interaction with Modern humans, mm-hmm. and, and <laughs> yeah, some yeah, of us, yeah. some of us yeah. have a touch of Wookie in our family. <laughs> yeah, <background>. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Other than me, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Middle Eastern. That's different. Yeah. Well, and but, they found yeah. in that same burial pit, I believe, uh, that they found even signs of them cooking with fire. That they were well, using fire, if, if I'm thinking of the same one you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, the Rising Star Cave. Yeah. But the thing is, I, I didn't want to mention that because oh. they're basing that on uh, the remnants of a fire. Yeah. And that's mm-hmm. really good to do. Uh, <laughs> I almost said COVID-19. What's <laughs> that? <laughs> What do they call it? That the, the radioactive dating technique. Oh, carbon dating. Carbon dating. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but they had not at the point that I heard about all of this. Oh, I is, see. It's still. Uh, I want to hear the carbon dating on that because oh, okay. it could have been some spelunker that was. Yeah, down very there true. Basically. Very good point. Yeah, yeah. But it is but, very interesting that they found that all together, and it was numerous bodies. It wasn't just one or two. It was like. 15 different bodies that they found. And what was interesting is that this burial mound was a series of chambers that were in like from these tubes that were everything from a couple of feet in diameter to eight inches in diameter. 
and mm -hmm. they and they were dragging the bodies to these areas to bury them and so it's fascinating because i i think one of the things that they had said is like it was thought that until much later uh homo sapiens that they didn't bury the dead no and, uh yeah uh it it may be that uh in the uh neolithic the last part of the stone age that that homo sapiens were buried but for all we know at this point maybe they learned it from homo nilati yeah. I'm going to learn to pronounce that. If I can pronounce it, oh, mua, mua, oh, mua, mua, which took me hours sitting in front of the mirror going, that may be a spacecraft, but in Hawaii, they call it, oh, mua, mua. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Not, oh, mua, 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 mua. Yeah, yeah, or mua, mua, mua. And now the news. Yeah. <laughs> All Mua Mua has left the solar system right. and Elvis has left the building. <laughs> the tales from my partner, Wolf Blitzer. How? <laughs> Breaking news. <laughs> Sorry, Wolf. And again, did Elvis catch a ride on Oh Mua Mua? Right. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. It may be his starship. That's know? right. That's right. I mean, you heard a voice saying, I'm leaving now. Mm hmm. Okay, warp factor four, Mr. Sugar. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Very. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's right. Goodbye, <laughs> Earthling suckers. <laughs> it is really fascinating uh, what they're discovering, and uh, I, I'm sure you're familiar with Graham Hancock's work. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, and uh, it's very interesting when uh, I like what he says. He says, uh, shit just keeps getting older. <laughs> yeah, that that may be. I think you lose the trail for anything that is uh, in the lineage of human beings. But most of the history of the planet Earth is way for that. And the number of discoveries that have been made earlier than that uh, are relatively sparse uh, when I was a kid you know a thousand years ago <laughs> and in school they taught that uh, continental drift was a quack theory mm -hmm. oh, now wow. it's orthodox yeah. you know uh, understanding that the there was once a supercontinent and then it divided and then it divided Pangea. and then uh, yeah and then atlantis sank and all mm -hmm. hell broke loose <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting though i didn't know that continental drift was considered mm -hmm. uh what, what bullpucky yeah what <laughs> yeah yep. it's that's it very was interesting only it was only the people in what you might call the Graham Hancock lineage, mm. spiritual lineage, so to speak. Uh, uh, Peter Tompkins, uh, oh, yeah. John Anthony West, who yep. uh, I think was a direct in influence on. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, well, he was the one that came up with the whole um, water. Uh, marks on the Sphinx, right? To say that the Sphinx may be older than what we think due to the uh, the watermarks. Well, or I mean, like he that, came right? up with a lot of stuff. There was a, a oh, was French more, guy yeah. named yeah. Swaller de Libitz who very much influenced him, but who didn't write any books, at least not in English. Mm. But all of these alignments that exist for the pyramids suggest that the Egyptians were trying to say something other than uh, sticking their dead uh, kings in a huge metallic box, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, <laughs> made of made of stone and surfaced with uh, tooth enamel. I don't know something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The most precise yeah. boxes made out of granite that you've ever seen in your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're. And, uh, yeah, have you seen the evidence that they've showed about the what looks like liquid polishing? That it, they can almost see like drip marks off the top of those boxes that almost looks like they yeah. use some kind of liquid. It's very, very fascinating. That was something that uh, Peter Tompkins uh, okay. went, went into in great detail in his book on the on the Great Pyramid. Yeah. 
There's so much we, great literature about that, about that stuff. Yeah, well, because that has been studied. In fact, yeah. if you look at the interior uh, corridors and rooms, king's room, queen's room, the prince's room. Yeah, no, yeah. That's, that's your no room. Prince. That's yeah. your room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, I'm not a mummy. Yet. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but uh, if you look at the uh, of a cutaway of the grand gallery going into these various uh, places that are supposedly burial uh, areas. You just dis- describe the rising star cave. Hmm. Difficult to access. Have to go through these narrow passages. There's a drop off. There are false beginnings. And then you get into the actual burial chamber. That's a great point. Mm-hmm. You're right. I just realized that in talking to you. I mean, well, you're right, though. That's exactly the formation is very, very similar. When you look at the diagrams of what they've shown, it's these small corridors opening up into bigger chambers. Very, very interesting. So that's a that's a really good point. It was so narrow that the presiding archaeologist uh, had to recruit in a sort of odd and possible to misconstrue way, he needed small, young, female archaeologists <laughs> to go into this. Well, it turns out that anybody with any kind of bulk on them yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, would through. not be able to go through that narrow passage. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and if they weren't... Uh, skilled in archaeology they couldn't uh, you know if they got in they wouldn't be able to interpret things and if they had not had caving experience they would certainly have freaked out yeah eventually after years of, you know only seeing it through his uh, closed circuit camera he wanted to go in but he had to lose a lot of weight in order to be able to do it <laughs> yeah i yeah. mean he was not he is not a portly guy at all but he's still <laughs> he's a guy yeah and, sure uh, you know uh, well even in that chamber the rising star uh, caverns or cave or whatever you want to call it um they employed some of the locals that were really small people like yeah. really small they said that even the i think the guy's main guy's name was lee something that they hmm. that was uh that was going through it and then they hired a bunch of spelunkers to go in there and uh, professional cave divers uh, and uh, because it was like these crazy narrow chambers that they were, you know, it makes you wonder how were these people supposedly dragging bodies through there? I mean, crazy really makes you wonder. Uh, Small beings dragging bodies into this incredibly tight area. Yeah. No indication that there had been a previous entrance that had collapsed or anything of that sort. In fact, they think there is another chamber beyond the so-called burial chamber. Really? Which hmm. it actually, by definition, is a burial chamber. But, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm, I, 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 there are archaeologists who are saying, oh, it was just some spelunkers back yeah. in the day. You know, those wily Afrikaners, you can't trust them. (laughs) (laughs) Well, they were also saying there was mainstream archaeologists were trying to say it was animals that were dragging bodies in there and and eating them, that it was a a prey Hmm. cave. And they were like, Uh, there's no evidence of that. No, the animal bones have no indication of tooth marks or anything else that you would certainly expect. And the body, same find. thing with the bodies that are in there the, the, that they found. There's no chew marks on the bones. Well, ancient peoples were smaller anyways, usually in stature. Generally, yeah. Generally so. Yeah, very true. And, and they found, other than one rat, which you can find, you know, journey to the center of the earth. First, they <laughs> find the earth is hollow. And then the rats appear. <laughs> let's face it, rats and cockroaches are... Immortal. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. just live forever. <laughs> so, yeah, and politicians. Yeah. That's yeah, uh, yeah, that's yeah. A, yeah. <laughs> you know they they uh, 
there's a psychiatric term for it, but these shapes on Mars often appear to be uh, coherent objects. But on mm. the other hand, uh, if you look at the, sand, the shifting sands of the Sahara, mm -hmm. you will see your Aunt Bessie's face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's the Rorschach, the Rorschach yeah. test. But, but once or twice, they've come across something that looked like a rat. Hmm. And I thought, if there's any life on Mars... It's going to be a rat. It's going to be a rat. It's going to be a rat cockroach hybrid is what it's going to be. Yeah, that's right. The rat Evolution is a marvelous thing. Yes. Hello, we're the cockroach rats of Mars. Yeah. We eat humans here. Send more people. That's right. That's right. Elon Musk is working for him. Yeah. Yeah. Ready to send food. I will not mind. If he goes tomorrow, yeah. <laughs> gets eaten by the rat roaches. He's half robot, I'll, anyways. I'll yeah. wave goodbye <laughs> on his 17 year journey out. <laughs> Adieu, Musk. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, all right. So, so let's let's get back to the Black Lodge. So, what you were telling us before. Are those some of the secrets of the Black Lodge, or is that kind of main? Is that what's known about them publicly there no no those are secrets oh, okay mm. but they are more or less secrets hidden in plain sight uh -huh. in in that <clears throat> if you see the ah, i hesitate to use the word the employees of the black lodge mm. they're non-corporeal but they see the future. They probably play the stock market. I guess it isn't play for them since they know what. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, they probably play the commodities market. Yeah, sure, they, sure. They know when the orange juice is going to get whipped away by a hurricane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They sell short and make a bundle. And they hire mafiosi, uh, uh, Russian mob, uh, the, the tongs from... China and Hong Kong, which are notorious and that also mm. exist in this country, and uh, other uh, lowlifes, mm -hmm. uh, mercenaries, maybe even that guy that uh, blew up in his airplane. Uh, which guy's that? Uh, the Russian uh, uh, oligarch. That, uh, oh no. yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Who's chef? The hot dog boy. <laughs> the hot dog boy. <laughs> yeah, he had a hot dog cart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. hot yep. dog boy. Yeah, that's right. The wiener man. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I can't he, remember the, what his name is. Everybody's name is Valensky over there. Yeah, he's got a ski at the <laughs> end. It's of all that. Well, <laughs> ski means son of. Okay. Ah, yeah. okay. If it has an I on the end, it is most probably a. Polish or Russian or Ukrainian mm -hmm. or uh, Belarusian name. I if see, it has okay. a Y on the end, it's a Jewish name that is adopted from the Polish or Russian or whatever. Oh, interesting. Name. So yeah. Interesting. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Well, he's a Y person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Putin. Is why is he I there? Person. Why is yep. he in charge? Why? Yeah. No, I get you. <laughs> why? Literally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because he was something they don't do in Russia. He was elected. Yep. Well, and he was an actor. Yeah. Right? He was an actor what? who once comedian. played, was played the president comedian. of Ukraine. Yeah, yeah. A comedian. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Uh, Have so you ever seen the, his movie where he was... Uh, uh, elected president of the that's Ukraine. Right, that's right. That's right. Decided. Hmm. This seems like a very good thing to do. <laughs> After all, this is a quiet, peaceful country. Yeah. That. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I play a president on TV. Kind of like Team America. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what? So what? So what? I'm gathering from what you're talking about at the Black Lodge, and correct me if I'm wrong. That these are the people that are kind of in control of it. I mean, if they are perceiving time outside of time and they can, they know what's coming, they are observing it, then technically it makes sense that they would be the ones in charge of what's going on in the world, correct? They're the ones moving the pieces. So when people say they, are they meaning the Black Lodge? 
think of a chessboard. Okay. There are two sets of pieces. The the white pieces are beige often. Yeah. Especially if they're carved from illicit elephant bone. <laughs> Ivory. <laughs> yeah, we'll, sure. we'll, we'll pass on that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then there are the black pieces, mm. usually made out of plastic. But that's just in my league. Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. They would be in charge were it not that there is another set on the other side. Oh, it's bad. And okay. as they say in the martial arts, for every move, there is a counter move. Mm-hmm. So there is, uh, as the Essenes put it, there is a war of the sons of light and the sons of darkness. Mm-hmm. Now, they both know who will win. They both know? Of course. They, can, mm-hmm. they don't have a sense of time. That's why when they're agents manifest as UFO contacts, as in uh, Indrid Cold is uh, my favorite example. Ah, okay. Indrid yeah. Cold says a number of things, and his name decodes very well in the cipher that I work with. But uh, hmm. he appears to be uh, a lost agent of the uh, the Ascended Masters, not mm. the Black Lodge, him and his little crew. And they're apparently here for, uh, they're on the run from the Black Lodge. But the first question out of his mouth, or as John Keel used to point out, often the case, the first question that uh, the, the better uh, close encounter cases have is the question, what time am I in? Mm. Because there is a downside to being outside of time, which is if you emerge into time, which you have to do, you can't play the stock market if you can't put your money down or get sure. somebody to do it for you. You need to know whether it's 1876 or 2121, you know, so... Uh, and you can't go to the Mayan calendar because that stops when they went on strike back in the day. But that's all. <laughs> we'll, we'll do that program at another time. Uh, yeah, sure, yeah, the Mayan strike. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. Mayan strike. Yeah. I said, all oh, the calendar ends. It will be the end of the world in 2012. I said, no. Some guy had been carving that for the big kahuna chiefs, whatever. <laughs> and he said, shit. I quit. <laughs> I quit and walked <laughs> off into the jungle. And eventually, that's what happened to the whole Mayan civilization. Yeah. No disaster. They just all walked off into the jungle. And the king said, I need another sacrifice. Do we have a volunteer? Anybody? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Where are my wives? <laughs> So there's a, all in Honduras, sweetie. All in you Honduras. are screwed. <laughs> <laughs> so there's technically like a white lodge, not uh, not uh, that enjoys the hoods, yeah. and then there's the black lodge. Black lodge and ascended masters or secret chiefs or uh, the the cabalistic term is Lamed Vavniks, which means hmm. thirty five. I there's only a small number of them. Um, mm. um, uh, there's, uh, or, or the term bodhisattvas in Buddhism or uh, rishis in uh, Sanskrit. Uh, they're all the same thing. I see. When, they're, when they get past the term and describe what you're talking about, they're either going into the Black Lodge description or they're going into the Secret Chiefs description. And the names are our mortal human names for them, not what they call themselves. Sure, yeah. What they call themselves is probably something in, you know, the, the uh, porpoise language. The porpoise <laughs> language. <laughs> <laughs> they're smarter than us anyways. Guttural noises. Yeah. And, uh, so okay, so it's so there's a counter counterbalance group. 
that are fighting the the battle of good and evil. Mm -hmm. And they're all good and bad can see who's going to win. Mm -hmm. But they're making moves. So so let me ask you this. If they know who's going to win, then are they just procedurally going through the actions or are they or is like the 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 dark side trying to change the outcome in any way or like how does that work? Well, let me explain. Please, yes. Here, here's a profile, and <laughs> here's a full face, and the back of my head is in here somewhere. <laughs> okay. That proves I'm not a robot. Yes. Oh, okay, okay. They original. always have an open <laughs> thing in the back of their head, like Got the K Dick robot that disappeared. <laughs> um, Big Dick robot that disappeared. I love it. It did, and I, I, I could make things like that up, but I don't have to. It's a weird world. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> Apparently, oh, the guy who took it to some science fiction convention and it would, had conversations with people because it was programmed with everything Philip K. Dick ever wrote hmm. in his lifetime. So the robot would say, well, it's funny you should ask that. You see, well, as I said, and blah, 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 blah. And, uh, but he was carrying the head on the train had his suitcases and he left the head on the train and it was never seen again. Wow. Wow. Hmm. You can't make a story like that up. No yeah. one would believe it, but it happened. Yeah. Um, where was I going? Well, we were talking I, about the, like the, dark and light what I had asked is, yeah, is, is since they know what the outcome is going to be, because as you said, they already know who's going to win. Oh, that's why I was showing you. Yeah, your uh, your head. My my <laughs> mortal head. Yes, yes. Because the You're answer a to that question is, I know as much as any human being knows about the Black Lodge, but I can't answer that question because oh. I don't know because I am not an ascended master and not, okay. not privy to their inside stuff. In fact, it would be possible to. Uh, I have a serious brush with an agent of the Black Lodge many years ago. It turned out it was a warning, not a uh, not a kill squad. But had I been able to turn the tables and put my uh, Wonder Woman rope of truth around, it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What is the Black Lodge really all about? What is the motive there? He'd say, I don't know. They pay me well. <laughs> they, don't, they don't say anything other than if I reveal the nothing that I don't know, they will kill me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, there is no way to access that because they are non-corporeal beings that probably if they have any language other than telepathy it is probably i wasn't kidding it's probably more like the dolphin language than hmm. like any human language uh that we currently yeah. are capable of speaking so more like uh, sounds and tones as opposed to full words yeah yeah sure well uh, and that would make sense if you're an enlightened being you're, I would imagine it makes sense to me because there's so much lost in translation when it comes to emotions that we're trying to convey and what we say that I would imagine the best way to communicate it if you're enlightened is through emotional connection because then you can convey far better what you're trying to express emotionally than you can through words because as you slang. know as a writer – there's so many times where words fall short of the emotional gravity of a situation that we're trying to convey. So I can't imagine a more complete way to communicate than, well, fuck words. Let's just go with sounds and tones that are better express emotion that you can more of a, a almost like an empathic as along with telepathic communication. Yeah, and <clears throat> they're able to enhance their communication with devices, <clears throat> something like psionic machines. Uh, Richard Shaver used to call them telogs, which I think is taken from 
the Man Tongue Dictionary uh, for uh, telepathic augmentation, mm. uh, which he says interferes with people's dreams. I know that the uh, secret chiefs do that through synchronicities, which is why I tell field investigators, having done more than my share of that myself, if you think you're approaching a particular goal, yeah, we're finding the uh, the hidden saucer under Skinwalker Ranch or whatever mm. this year's uh, effort is. And something causes you to look to your left or to your right, follow the synchronicity. Oh, yeah. Don't, yeah. don't go for the goal. Follow the synchronicity because yeah. that's the way the secret chiefs work. Yeah. They drop hints. They probably have some moral objection to saying, well, listen, this is what the future is going to unfold for you. <laughs> Something like the thing in Star Trek about the non-intervention theory. Which yeah, the prime directive, directive, yeah. Prime directive, right. Yeah. And uh, the prime directive is often violated in Star Trek. Yeah, yeah. very yeah. true. Oh, very indeed. Well, we really don't <laughs> like doing this. Do you yeah. like it, Mr. Spock? Yeah. It's interesting. <laughs> but he's dead, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting because like, you know, you know so much about the Black Lodge, clearly. Like you you wrote a book about it, you know a lot. It's hard for me to imagine that you don't know that like how they how they actually manipulate things. You know? Oh, I, I know how when it comes to their manifestation. Yeah. What they're doing, I think I have a really good idea of that. Oh, okay. There are there are two two sets of purposes, and I'm not sure that they aren't factions. Hmm. Uh, uh, it depends. One is this what I call the solar vi uh, fixation, and this is discussed extensively in uh, the, the current. Books, it's backwards on the screen. Secrets. Yeah. It was. I promise you, it won't be backwards yes. for the audience. Yeah. It's only backwards for you. I promise. Oh, there we go. Oh, hey, well, there there go. Go. Hey, that's great. <laughs> Secrets of the Black Lodge revealed. I love the Reveal. big. I love the big and red that's stamp the reveal. Real, yeah, the real Black Lodge. The real Black Lodge, as opposed to the fake Black Lodge, which is the which is <laughs> no, the knockoff Gucci fake uh, black lodge no no the david lynch black lodge from twin peaks oh <laughs> I, think, I think he was talking about the real one but it was in a fictional series oh so, i uh, see okay uh he gets a deluxe copy so i'll either be hearing from him or his lawyer <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome a deluxe copy <laughs> that's great yeah well no, the pub it, publisher yeah. says he's going to print like 10 copies in hardcovers, autographed, and Bob. Oh, blah, nice. Blah. And uh, I said, do I get a copy? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> you get a copy of your own you book? You want a copy? Uh, I have several books. Yeah. I won't say from this publisher, but whoops, I just said <laughs> this publisher, <laughs> that I don't have copies of the books. I don't have them and never have had them. Okay. This one I got like three days ago. The book yeah. has been out for a month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had to read it hastily. I got it at the same time that I got this book by, by a friend of mine <laughs> who quotes me extensively. Which uh, one is he, it? Which is it? Oh, is that the same one? Northern Lights, oh. High Strangeness in Sweden. Oh, okay. I figure, you know, uh, it certainly is not in conflict with my book. And can I read you a little thing? Oh, that please. He, quote, he quotes me saying. Well, and before really you read it, let me ask you this. Have you, uh, do you ever do your own audio books? Like, do you ever do an audio book? I've been asked to do that. Yeah. And I would be glad to, but some publisher of audio books has to say yeah mm. we will do that mm -hmm. we'll provide professional equipment you know how i got this rather nice uh headset with the i did a podcast not too long ago 
with some most excellent people such as yourselves. Thank you. And they were so dissatisfied with the sound <laughs> quality on my end. They said, we're sending you something in the mail. Said, oh, that's oh. awesome. That's awesome. And this is a high-end set, but still. Well, I you sound great. Yeah. You sound great, so yeah. Yeah, because this is probably way out of my league in terms of <laughs> <laughs> want to see my old headset. Yeah. <laughs> yep, that's the, yep. Yeah, Commodore 799 right? at Walmart. There you go. Yep. Yep. It works. Such a bargain. <laughs> Sounds just like a Campbell soup can. Yeah. <laughs> Don't knock Campbell soup. Yeah. <laughs> never. Never. Only there the way it sounds. Only the way it sounds. The, towards the end of the month, when Campbell soup <laughs> starts to taste much better than it actually does. <laughs> indeed. Yep. Indeed. Indeed. So, so what, let me ask you this. So what inspired you other than just having this knowledge, what inspired you to write the, the black lodge? I was originally going to get around to the third book in the secret cipher series on the secret chiefs about which I know as much as I know about the black lodge, maybe a little more. Um, but times in my view have turned so dark mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so resemble what the black lodge would like to see in the world that I thought education is a great, great air freshener. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. So I will devote it to the Black Lodge because nobody writes about that anymore. It was common, commonly discussed in the late uh, 1800s, early 1900s, and then right after World War I, for whatever reason, uh, it stopped being discussed. And in my uh, OTO days, I was even told by... Uh, well, it wasn't that senior, but he was the senior most person that I knew at that time in the OTO. Oh, we don't discuss the Black Lodge mm. at the highest levels, to which my response was, okay, <laughs> I hear you, boss. Yep. <laughs> uh, I got to go home. I, I had something to write down about a dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. My dog named Black Lodge. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, Lodge. <laughs> so what, sit. so what, what sit. kind of a... <laughs> sit, I said. Sit, Lodge. <laughs> sit Damn you. Uh, so what, what kind of events, you know, you said you started seeing darkness in the world that resembled what you thought the black lodge would like to see so what i mean if you want to say what uh, specifically uh what sparked that what what specific events uh one thing that we tried to avoid doing with one exception in the book was talking about current organizations that we mm. think are directly influenced by the Black Lodge. Uh, you we avoided kind of that? Ex yeah, because we, we bring it right up to date, but stop there because of the concern that we have that instead of Graham Hancock, we'll get David Icke, you know, who mm -hmm. basically uses anti-Semitic tropes, only he calls the Jews reptilians. Mm. And he later, I've been told by friends in Britain, uh, has gotten around to say, yeah, I meant Jews. Oh, well, really? it's, mm. it's easy to go from any kind of conspiracy thinking to say that group of people is controlled by the reptiles, mm -hmm, by the sure. Black Lodge, mm -hmm. by the poisoners of the well, by witches. Sure, who actually sure. are very Semitic looking and are <laughs> suspiciously like the Jews. <laughs> so you think David Icke is, is, is definitely not speaking truth? Well, I, I think that there may be some truth in what he has to say because it resembles what Graham Hancock and the people that we were talking about earlier who are, have gone on to their reward had to say. 
but he introduces the idea that reptilians have infiltrated the governments of the world. Yeah. The, the, the late queen was supposed to be one. The international bankers, blah, 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 blah. Those are all, uh, given my background, and I'm very, I, I often say, I'm not just Jewish, I'm very very Jewish. <laughs> very, very Jewish. <laughs> Even though oh, I great. never got a copy of the secret book. Well, yeah. da- David Icke is part of a secret group, too. I can't remember what it's called. Oh, really? Yes, he is. <laughs> I didn't know uh, I think it's called the non-Nazi party. <laughs> <There's> <laughs> <it>. <laughs> so he can say, See, we're not Nazis. Yeah. It's yeah. the non-Nazi party. We're just here to get the reptilians who control the international banking system and most of the governments of the world. And okay. Well, you know, I'm very, I'm very skeptical of anything that is, um, you know, talking about things going on without evidence, which I'm not saying he, I mean, there's some definite circumstantial evidence that he's brought forward. That is, is interesting to look at, but um, not hard evidence, you know, with the reptilian thing and all that. And so, yeah. uh, you know, that, that I'm, I'm kind of the same way about UFOs. I feel like this disclosure thing is just kind of a uh, Lucy in the football type maneuver that continues to happen. And especially now there's so many politicians involved. Um, I can't help but be skeptical. I mean, everybody that's coming forward, I I'm so skeptical of it. Um, because it's, it's specifically what people want to have happen. And I'm one of these that I, you know, if you look at generally how these groups capitalize, they capitalize using public interest Mm -hmm. and a big public public interest right now is UFOs and UAPs. And so what better way to get capture people's attention, money, all kinds of things then through, oh, hey, you know, you don't want to fund war anymore. Well, all right, we'll uh, we'll do UAP studies instead. You can give us money for that. So it makes me very don't, skeptical. Don't look at this. Yes. Here's the real truth. Yeah. You know? Okay. What are your well, thinkings on that with like David Grush and and have you have you kept up with any of that? Yes, of course, I keep up with it. I figured you did. Yeah, I think they're. Uh, what is that Russian term? That Full of shit? For tr- <laughs> no, 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 no. There's, a, there's literally a uh, uh, KGB-based term oh. from Soviet era, which really means it's something like comrade or something. Comrade? Uh, no, no, no. Compatriot? No, no, no. It, 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 if you don't know it, it, it's a, it's know a it. word. It came up uh, in relationship with the alleged oh. connection between a certain presidential candidate of the reptile party. I did not say reptiles. <laughs> <laughs> They're out there. And and uh his butt buddy I mean his friend Vladimir Putinsky. Mm. Okay. So wait, who uh, are we talking about? I'm lost yeah. in reptilians. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I think they're all reptilians. I don't know which one. I don't know which one. They all look leathery to me. I, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, they, if they're if they stay long. Collusion enough, is that the word you're looking for? Collusion? No, no, no. It's a Russian oh. word. Oh, well, means, I certainly don't know. It, it. means uh, a useful fool. That's hmm. the translation. Oh, okay. Look well, up. I have Google to know. Yeah. useful fool in, in Russian. Russian. Got it. Useful fool in Russian. Okay. In We're going to find out now. That's right. In real time, folks. This, well, this is Oh, my recorded. God. It's pronounced. It, well, here's what I got. I got Polensky Durak. Yeah. Polensky Durak. <laughs> Dude, that's, so that's you're saying above that my pay grade. The director of Rosemary's Baby. <laughs> Oh, is Pala- actual uh, yeah, Roman Polanski. Roman Polanski. Polanski. Yeah. Polanski. Yeah. Haven't seen him for a while. I think he's hiding in France. 
Hmm. Yeah, to, that was a while uh, ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I miss, well, but the, you know, there's no statute yeah. of limitations. Yeah, no, you're but, right. You're right. Yeah, I just totally forgot about that guy. I mean, I yeah. Well, interesting. Sh- th- uh, the fact that he dilly dallies with very young girls yeah. doesn't change the quality of his movies. Well, you know, well, unless, yeah, yeah, unless, of course. Uh, yeah. Well, and there's, I mean, there's rumors that uh, uh, Kubrick was kind of a prick, too. Yeah. But I mean, look what he came up with. He did the moon landing. So, you know, but uh, um, parts of it, right? <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I, it's just it's interesting because, OK, so getting back to uh, I'm not good with foreign languages, but um, what what are your feelings about Grush? I mean, without. What the Roman word is Polanski, so he's a Polanski, as in he's no, a. No, 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 it's it's uh, something like compromat, and it means oh. useful fool, okay. as in he's somebody captured. who somebody who has mental problems, yeah, or that yeah. has been interviewed, or that is useful to distract from the reality of things. And you could say that about a lot of them. I mean, you could oh, say yeah. that about a lot of the people in the UFO community are useful idiots. In fact, that is the term. Uh, have you ever seen the movie Mirage Men? Yes. I love it. Um, but that really opened my eyes, at least to the possibility. I'm not going to say everything that was in that because I don't trust Richard Doty for shit. No. But no. <clears throat> so he could be lying about the fact that he was lying. He could be lying about the fact that he was capturing people. But it is incredibly compelling when you look at it, especially that part where it's like Linda Mountain Howe and and Doty talking about the same scenario. And 80, it's 20. just really eye opening. But um they use that term specifically when talking to those people. They say that the CIA calls them useful idiots. Mm-hmm. And that's that's exactly what I see. And, I, you know, I have to reiterate because people jump on me about you don't like the troops and you don't like, you know, you don't support veterans. When I say that these people that are military are useful idiots, one of the things that was highlighted by Richard Doty himself in that film, uh, Mirage Men, is he says, look, they capitalize on your patriotism. Mm-hmm. They capitalize on, they go to you and say, look, for the sake of your country, you want to be a good patriot? Keep this secret. Or go and say this and that and this and this due to national security. You know, that's what they did to Paul Benowitz. I'm sure you're familiar with that. Uh, Very, yes. Yeah. And it isn't just in that field. I mean, uh, of course, uh, Targan went off uh, working on, uh, well, the term from my generation was astral projection. I think yeah. they called it mind reach or something. Using it as uh, through SRI, uh, Stanford Research Institute, <coughs> which was CIA funded yeah. uh, for a long time. It is not now, allegedly. Allegedly, um, yeah. <laughs> they were using it for spying purposes because they said. Because the Soviets are using it for spying purposes. Yeah, yeah. And then when the Cold War ended, they unceremoniously dropped the program, saying, oh, it didn't produce anything. Yeah, supposedly dropped the program, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, supposedly I almost said it that way, but I mean, (laughs) I'm just saying what the official announcement. (laughs) Yeah, of course. The disclosure thing for the last year or so, it's been from a certain group of people, mostly people who are too young to remember the... uh, Project Blue Book and the Condon Committee, yep. but I'm not. I was right there. Were you really? Even, oh, yeah. I oh, even wow. knew some of the people directly involved. Hell, Did Dr. Really? Condon, during the course of that, came to our convention. Oh, no gosh. kidding. Yeah, he came to uh, the uh, third annual National UFO Conference, which was in New York during the summer of love. <laughs> And I think he came in part to seem like he was interested, but yeah. actually he came calculating if it's in New York in, 19, in June of 1967, it's going to be a circus. And it was. Yeah. It yeah. was quite a circus. Roy Thinnis, the star of, uh, of uh, The Invaders, uh, which was the you are, the equivalent of the X Files in the sixties, oh, uh, dude. You are dropping <laughs> some gems yeah, yeah. that I gotta go check out now. You've mentioned several f- things already that I'm like, I gotta go check this out. I gotta go. Well, check it out. it's it, every episode of it uh, is up free for nothing with commercials. 
on on uh, on YouTube. Yes. Nice. Yeah. So it's not free. It costs brain cells because yeah. you're having to absorb commercials, <laughs> which are the I worst. Didn't say yes. They're on, but that doesn't mean you have to watch them. That's a what good you point, have to yes. watch for is the little thing in the corner that YouTube still does no that allows you <laughs> yeah. only to hear the first five seconds. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And I'm really good with that. And yep. now back to the invader. That's <laughs> right. With Martin production. You know, it's interesting because uh um, I like to watch commercials on mute because <laughs> I see it for the propaganda it is without any of the music, without any of the words. It's so easy to see right through that shit. I sometimes I really enjoy it. like Hulu commercials, the fucking worst. And I mute those <laughs> all the time and I watch them because I'm like, God, this is like brainwashing 101 it's really really crazy it's really crazy but they put some catchy music to it mm -hmm. some stupid people saying some dumb lines and you just kind of forget that it's brainwashing yeah, but it's, it's marketing really yeah. crazy but anyways anyways I'm, i apologize no, no 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 i will agree with you provided you say that the big pharma commercials oh, God. which didn't used to be legal no. they show people happily at play while they're listing all the side symptoms you might have that's right uh, if you've got acne this will get rid of it unfortunately <laughs> it will give you cancer yes. but the good news <laughs> is and all the while it's happy families running yeah. through the heather yeah, 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 exactly. For a small dose of ass cancer, you could be totally rid of your hemorrhoids. It's like WebMD. You're going to yeah, die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Anyways, so the invaders. In color. In color. It was, it was the first year of color television. Yeah. So the star of that, yeah. uh, Jim Mosley was in charge of the convention that year. So he put being a wealthy man, he put a lot of money into it and got the star of the invaders along with the amazing Randy who had pretty much on behalf of the convention gone down to the Nazca lines and, uh, and the amazing it. Randy. <laughs> yeah. He wasn't always a UFO skeptic. Hmm. Uh, he was a skeptic of everything else, but not UFOs. <laughs> but he called uh, himself the Amazing Randy as a skeptic? Well, his name was James Randy. Mm. Yeah. And, uh, well, I don't have to mention that. He's dead now. Let's let yeah. him sort yeah, of rest sure, in peace. Sure. Yeah, you <laughs> but he was, he was a famous member of the debunking organization, oh, Psychop. Okay. So they Psycop. called him in. Because he had been a stage magician. Oh. And a lot of stage magicians think, hmm, Houdini was a seance buster. So if things aren't going too well for me with my rabbit out of a hat routine, I can be a professional Skeptic. myth buster. Yeah, you know? yeah. Interesting. Okay. But. He was there to talk about the Nazca lines. It was straight talk. First time John Keel had spoken at a UFO convention. I mean, it was everybody. But, of course, that being a height of the hippie era, the love candidate for president was there. And uh, some of the speakers were the last of the classical contactees. Howard Minger was there. And uh, Dr. Condon there and i thought at the time maybe this is legit but probably he's just uh uh gathering ammunition for having done the big build-up for the big letdown well we looked carefully at all this but there's nothing to it nothing here to see go home that was disclosure 1967-68 and by then, Dr. Hynek had defected from the official view and been fired by the Air Force. So I knew what was coming. But I didn't know that a stray letter from one of the senior members of the Condon Committee at the University of Colorado used the phrase, the trick would be, to appear to be non-biased observers, but reluctantly reaching the point uh, of uh, finding that there's simply nothing to the phenomena. So when the disclosure movement got started, I thought, 
as Yogi Berra, that great sage, once put it. That's déjà vu all over again. (laughs) (laughs) And I tried to tell people I was on one disclosure program, and, oh, the comments were so blistering. Oh, really? I almost felt ashamed if I were capable of such a thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know the but I yeah go ahead go ahead. It's it's still sold soap, so I you know I, <laughs> I rolled with the punches. Yeah, it's interesting because there is there is this real um, like barrier of 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 people that come to the attack when you start to question the UFO topic. And my thing is like, I've seen as in my opinion, as much compelling evidence as there is that, and maybe you can disagree with me, but that, that aliens and UFOs are interacting with us in the way that's been told to us since the early days of, you know, Roswell and on. Um, I think there's just as much compelling evidence that it's been propaganda that's been put out to distract us from the real truth, which is the capture of crazy technology from the Nazis that we implemented and improved beyond anything the public has seen. And then you add in like Ben Rich, CEO of Lockheed Martin, saying we're well beyond what the public knows, 30, 50, 80 years, that I think it's highly likely that everything that we're seeing could be us experimenting with anti-gravity and all kinds of things and uh and that these people are put out there to get us to believe that it's aliens and ufos as opposed to government technology well that's certainly true of certain things sure for example area 51 is secret not because there are aliens busily showing us their technology but because that's where secret weapons are developed. Yeah. The stealth bomber was developed at, uh, uh, at Area 51. Um, I mean, that's not... The, the contents of what they're doing at any given moment is secret, but it's, uh, it's the test area for uh, wep- uh, future weapon systems. Yeah immediate future weapon systems and has been for a long time uh that was true at one time at wright patterson air force base which is where part project blue book was based yeah. so i think there is a long-standing no i don't think this i know this a long-standing disinformation campaign designed to create interest in et phoning home and uh uh, to deflect interest that might be useful to the defense establishment. And I happen to be a supporter of the defense establishment because I think we li- You asked me what, what's dark about the times. Mm-hmm. I grew up in the Cold War. Yeah. I went to school, to high school, the day that the uh, Cuba Missile Crisis came to a head. Mm. We all expected to die. Yeah. And you guys were literally all, prepping for it. Yeah, going under your desk. No, we were stuff, telling right? nervous jokes and, <laughs> you know, and doing what, what teenagers do because yeah. teenagers don't fully understand death. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, it takes, that's why they drag race and their last word is. No breaks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I mean, like in schools, you guys were uh, right. I mean, it was that whole get under the desk thing, you know, basically kiss your ass. Oh, goodbye. yeah. We, we evacuated the wow. city. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah. At a given point, uh, unannounced, hmm. except our parents already knew because they had to show up to drive us. Mm-hmm. Oh, they would drive us evacuation. 15 miles out of town away from Lockheed and, uh, that was supposed to save us. That was wow. about as effective as getting miles. under your desk and kissing yes. your ass. Yeah, somebody. exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you just the catch the is, blast 10 seconds later. <laughs> a so. lot of us had nuclear war nightmares. Hmm. Instead of uh, slasher movies in our yeah. dreams, yeah. we dreamed about being you know, incinerated in a nuclear war. Well, because that, re- uh, that was a real reality. 
Like it wasn't of like a, it was. a fever but dream. Here, it was a here's reality. The rub. When I was young, partly because I thought the Vietnam War was a total waste of time, mm-hmm. uh, not because I think the Vietnamese are super good folks, <laughs> yeah. really only, have, but because I really didn't think we had a dog in that hunt. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, same was true with Iraq much later. Yes, and absolutely. Yeah. Lies on top of lies. Oil. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, we're not getting the oil, and it was pretty yeah. predictable that we wouldn't be. Uh, if the oil is going anywhere, it's going to their next-door neighbor, Iran. Yep. Yeah. Because you can, I, I think uh, Saddam Hussein was a bad, bad guy. But he hated Iran. Yeah. Persia. I don't know. Some king of Iran decided to call it Iran because it's the word in Persian, mm-hmm. Aryan. You know, like, oh. we're not Arabs. We are Aryan. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, nobody says that, but I still call it Persia. It's on the Persian Gulf. They speak yeah. Persian. By God, it's Persia. <laughs> it's Persia. <laughs> Walks like a duck, yeah, talks right. like a duck. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, yeah. so anyway, that was a waste. Uh, Afghanistan was not altogether a waste, but you know, after twenty years, you think you catch the message. Yeah. Nobody ever wins a war in mm-hmm. Afghanistan. That's right, yeah. uh, except the Afghani's. So, yeah, I thought maybe we should drop a big one on that. <laughs> remember, the, remember the camp with the monkey bars. You know yeah. where the Al Qaeda right, people the videos, were. Yep, coming yeah. out. Uh, yeah, dropped a big one. Maybe, mm-hmm. maybe not nuclear. Maybe the Moab, which was Here a huge yep. jail <laughs> bomb, yeah. so that anybody within forty miles would be Christie critters <laughs> instantly, and Glass. and that would be our response to nine eleven. And then mm-hmm. you know, no troops. Maybe a couple of special ops to yeah. Uh, but well, there's a lot of history there. There's a lot of history that goes back to the, the you know the, the 80s is, and the 90s, and yeah. you can easily fall into the trap of thinking, well, all defense, all uh, high tech defense, is a bad idea. To sure. which I subscribed at one time, mm-hmm. until I realized not all wars are the same. True. I yeah. like to think if I had been around when World War II happened i probably would have fought in it Mm. um would have volunteered i wouldn't have waited to be drafted yeah um and the fact is that since nagasaki which was 1945 august 9th 1945 no nuclear weapon has been exploded in anger to this day yeah yeah but when the Cold War ended, <clears throat> I thought that was over. I thought, well, there's no reason now to continue to have nuclear weapons, but there's also no reason to trust Russia or, God forbid, China. Mm-hmm. However, if you have phased, monitored withdrawal, or as Ronald Reagan put it, trust but verify, Yeah. Th- then because we are in a time of peace people won't have dread of nuclear war and on a phased basis you can reduce nuclear arsenals down to the level of the uh pakistani nuclear arsenal or something yeah but uh i think that uh the slogan peace through superior firepower has kept us from getting into a nuclear war since Nagasaki because that wasn't lost on anybody. Mm -hmm. Not on the Ayatollah Khomeini, not on Putin who wants to revive the Russian Empire, not on anybody because it would, well, it wouldn't destroy the world, but it would destroy all civilization in the Northern Hemisphere. And that is sufficient to keep anybody from using it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's an interesting, you know, it's, the it's mass a, is ended. Go <laughs> in peace. I don't think they'd use nukes though, because they'd waste all the resources though. Here, you know, I think it'd be an EMP personally, but I say th- I think that as well. But yeah, but what would the response to that be? I mean, yeah. uh, uh, 
they can rattle sabers mm -hmm. and they can try to. Uh, I'm sure North Korea would love to have South Korea incorporated into it. Yes. Although to do that, they would have to lay waste to the one part of their peninsula that actually is prosperous. Mm -hmm. so, uh, and I think uh, the Kim family likes living large mm -hmm. in every sense of the word. <laughs> well, and going, going back to the idea of like what we have behind closed doors is – Really, the, the, in my mind, the truth is, is that there are a lot of possibilities on the table. I mean, we live in a day and age, we have lived <clears throat> in an age of false flags since the Gulf of Tonkin. I mean, you, you know, numerous. Um, when that happened, yeah. I was sitting and watching TV, TV with my dad, who was a very perceptive person. And he said, as they were announcing, what were they called? The uh, Maddox and the Turner Joy in the Gulf of Tonkin. Oh, okay. And my father said, in a low voice, he said, this is the way it always starts. Hmm. Mm. And I thought, quick on the uptake. Yeah. This, this is a shill to get people hit up. This yeah. is, you know, uh, I think it was, well, I mean, we're getting off into the politics of yes, it. But the sure, point yeah, is yeah. the point is that I got involved with the Black Lodge book rather than a book on the secret cheats because the Black Lodge is dedicated to getting everybody so mad at everybody else mm -hmm. that domestic civil wars will break out and ultimately they hope a nuclear war will wipe out civilization as we know it. They're not corporeal, and they don't give a damn even about their own uh, thralls, their own physical humans that they pay. Um, all they care about is uh, keeping the lid on in their take on things. And I see signs in domestic politics of uh, people not talking to other people, uh, uh, I sort of think that we have some of the same ingredients that existed in this country in the 1850s. Mm, and like those of, like people, like MAGA people hating liberals and liberals hating everybody that isn't a liberal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. is that is Black Lodge one oh one. Yeah. It doesn't matter who's right and wrong to them. Yeah. What matters is that they hate each other. Yeah. Well I mean that's a common law enforcement tactic mm -hmm. in gang areas is you send people in to stir the pot against the two groups and you let them wipe each other out. And, and I mean, that's you, I see, I see a lot of evidence for that. I mean, everything down the line, I mean, you can, every topic you can imagine people are on polar opposites. I've never seen anything like it. I mean, me, me either. And yeah. the fact is that I have friends across the, of course, I don't talk about politics that often. I mean, I've talked about it more on this program than anything I've done in the last five years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to talk about <clears throat> political stuff on Facebook. Oh, the, it's the, the worst. Or, yep. Oh, my <laughs> the God. The flack that I got yeah. from the Ross Perot people, the... Uh, I forgot which, about that guy. Uh, <laughs> Big ears. Rand Paul's daddy. What's his name? Oh, Ron Paul. Ron Paul. Ron, yeah, yep. the do Ron. The yep. second Ron. Second coming of Ron. The second coming. Ron Paul. <laughs> and then <clears throat> the chick on the on the left, what was her name? Jill Stein, who it mm. turns out was taking money from Russia. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I mean... Yeah, I think I there's mean, a lot of money being swapped around. Yeah, I do too. Oh, yeah. Especially, I mean it. Yeah, especially so, these days, yeah. I thought, I see the invisible hand of the Black Lodge in this. Mm. And if I tell the story of the Black Lodge, maybe I will, will have struck a small blow for, before you decide that everybody that is a liberal is uh uh, communist or mm -hmm. something far worse. And before you decide 
that every MAGA person secretly has a swastika on their sleeve and yeah. marches around at night with a tiki torch. <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> the Jews will not replace us. Yeah. Yes, we already have. You're, you're too late. Yeah. And <laughs> We own the comedy business. Yeah. Yeah, well, so, hey, look. So, hey, a finger for you and a finger for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it. So, you know, I I hear groups like I hear names like Illuminati, and groups like WEF, mm-hmm. World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab, things like this. So, how do these groups? Because look, there's a lot of people that say. It describe exactly what you're describing, except they use the term Illuminati, or they they talk about the exact same thing, and they talk about Klaus Schwab and the the Great Reset, and you know uh, you'll you'll own nothing and be happy. So, are the are is it all intertwined as you had mentioned before, like all these different cultures that call things different names, but yet it's the same thing? Is that what's happening here? People are labeling it as the Illuminati or the WEF, but it's all Black Lodge related? Yeah, actually, and it's not interchangeable in that sense. Mm. The Illuminati did exist in the 18th century. Oh, but they no were longer. In, no, not since uh. the elector of Bavaria, who had been their sponsor, uh. decided that they were anti-monarchy <laughs> and suppress the entire organization out of that grew a certain school of freemasonry of which i am a grandmaster i see okay <laughs> and and i am not of the illuminati they ceased to exist before 1800 okay but the term has not yeah. and i think the black lodge uses that you were talking about deflecting attention from secret projects that yep, the government yep, was involved yep. okay Anytime the Black Lodge feels that people are getting close, and I wouldn't be surprised if some book comes out that says, oh, well, Alan Greenfield has many crimes. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm old now, so what, what are they going to do? You know? Yeah, what are they going to do? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I am a dirty old man. <laughs> I just want to say I intend to continue to be for a very long time. <laughs> That's great. Send me to Guantanamo. Bay. I'll make friends with the guys. <laughs> the lonely old guy. <laughs> You're a people pleaser, yeah, Alan. You're a people pleaser. <laughs> Somebody he needs to be. Anyway, so. Soft hands. The, the, the final straw that pushed me was, and I will mention the name of a semi-contemporary organization because they've gone quiet. When QAnon started to get people to dance to its tunes, Mm -hmm. saying, oh, well, uh, if you go and stand in Dealey Plaza, uh, JFK is going to come back. Mm -hmm. Uh, And a bunch of people gathered. I thought, this is Black Lodge stuff. It's Mm. the build-up for the letdown. What is that designed to do? A, to make people angry, and B, if they don't get angry, they get disgruntled, and they blame everybody else other than the people that are there, except maybe the two or three spies from the reptilians. (laughs) Well, that's something I had pointed out about the Q stuff is that, you know, nobody knew who started that. Nobody knew who Q was. And that is so reminiscent. I I tend to highlight like the CIA and stuff like that. But of course, you're going much, much higher than that. But I've always said, like, look, if you look back at these groups that were started that had no name attributed to the origins of it, nine times out of ten, it comes back to a government agency and and or higher up. And so. Um, I immediately, I was extremely skeptical of that, the, you know, and so that's something I've said. And then all of a sudden, as you had said, it just kind of falls out, you know, and then it has like tricklings here and there and, you know, little things. And of course there's a lot of people that claim, well, that's because they were, you know, forced to kind of dismantle and get off all main platforms. But it's like, but was it orchestrated to look like that? You know, was it orchestrated to capture a bunch of people to discredit them? Oh, yeah, I think it started out as uh, the powers that be. I call them 
for lack of a term, the men from Texas. Mm. And from That's Texas. just based on Oliver Stone's movie Nixon, because oh. Nixon was the president of the United States. But when he really gets in, in trouble is he goes to the guys in Texas with his, you know, his... Aha! I apologize, my cat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Vive la France! Liberty, egality, fraternity. So, I have a really fat cat that's also retarded, so <laughs> it's just a really bad combination. So I wonder who made the Georgia Guidestones, then. Is it the Black Lodge? Uh, well... I think it was more likely that whoever blew up the Georgia yes. guys. So, <laughs> yeah, I oh. saw the video. Yeah, the was <laughs> was in league with the Black Lodge, and the mm-hmm. guy that built them uh, was sincere, but uh, you know, sort of like a lot of New Agey people, a bit on the oopsie poo benighted side. Mm-hmm. Which uh, that's not a Black Lodge or a secret chief thing. That's useful fools to somebody Mm -hmm. i don't know sure but but that you know desecrating something like that is just low Mm -hmm. so Uh, so when you say desecrating something like that what what did the georgia guidestones mean to you the same thing that the u.n circa 1945 tried to accomplish which is we've just been through the most hideous war in the history of the world that ended with the unleashing of the ultimate weapons that could wipe us all out. Let's let everybody get together and we'll talk and sing come by ya <laughs> and all things will be happy and mm-hmm. then we'll study war no more. And as admirable as that is as a goal, uh, you put uh you give a veto power to Russia in the Security Council, the most vulnerable place where you would react to something, you might as well close up shop and go home. Um, it just was, it was not to be. Uh, and the addition of countries that basically are autocracies, uh, fledgling autocracies and uh, mired countries mired in superstition and backwardness and so forth as democratic as that sounds on paper in practice you're talking about something that's even more frozen in place than the u.s congress yeah. and you mean and that's, the u.n that's what you're saying yeah yeah UN. yeah uh, well, I was, agree. I, I think that I think we should dismantle the UN. And me personally, I think there. I I agree. Yeah, I wouldn't There's have no agreed reason twenty years ago. But it, yeah. it every crisis that has occurred in the last well, I think the current because it rotates. The current head of the UN Civil Rights Commission is the government of Syria. Hmm. Yeah, one of the worst human rights records in the world to their own people to their yeah, own yeah yeah you know, exactly so so when you going back to the georgia guidestones are you saying that you you see the georgia guidestones as as a peaceful gesture is that what you're saying oh yeah and then i see destroying them as somebody might get the idea that peace is contagious and oh, I see. Okay. Doesn't People it say, on the, doesn't it say in the Georgia Guidestones that there'll be more, no more than five hundred thousand people left on the earth? Though it says a lot of things. I mean, yeah. if you yeah. go all the yeah. way around, yeah. Uh, so, it's so not it was meant as a, it no. was meant yeah. as a peaceful gesture, but what's written on it, you think was was what was this particular guy's take? on what was happening to the world unless it shows a better course. Mm. Okay. And Which, the better course is less people. No, the better course, uh, that was a prediction that if the same vector is followed out to its logical conclusion, 
as Einstein put it, I can't tell you about World War Three, but I can tell you all about World War Four. <laughs> It'll be fought with bows yeah. and yeah. yeah and spears and yeah, very yeah, very true. Mm-hmm. Well, it's it's interesting only because I. For me, I don't trust anything anymore. I'm so, I, I've been so, the propaganda has been so fierce from every side and every angle with every topic that it is, it is so, I just see it everywhere. And I, as I tell Mr. C all the time, I say, um, I see, I default to propaganda. If I see something coming out of almost anywhere, uh, I default propaganda and I read it as such. And then if I am like, okay, well, I'm not getting a whole lot of propaganda vibes. Then I go from there. Um, but it's anymore. It's, it's, it, I feel like I'm in that movie. They live. Yeah, <laughs> I really do. I feel like I'm in that movie where everything I see is, is propaganda and matrix. narratives <laughs> and, and brainwashing. And it's like, uh, it's so it's so crazy and uh and so i don't know what to believe there's a lot of things i want to believe i you know i want to believe that there's hope in the government i i want to i want to uh, believe that somebody is going to come along and hopefully steer this fucking ship in the right direction for once instead of straight into the hurricane and um and, and it just makes me wonder, is that even possible? Because with groups like you're talking about with the Black Lodge that, let's be honest, they're far above government. They're controlling levels above government that, that I, I would doubt even Congress knows about. I think those idiots don't know shit. No, they're paid. <laughs> and, and so they're, they're, the, they're, they're actors. They're the, they're, uh, what's the term for a, a theater major? Um, oh, a thespian. Uh, thespian. They're thespians yeah. and they thespians. suck at it. <laughs> And uh, they're they're the worst. They've been trained by soap operas, and uh, and so it's it's like it's really, it just it, it's so much theater. It just it's so fake. I'm like, man, I don't know what to believe anymore. I question everything. So you're so uh, what I admire about you and and people like yourself, which there's nobody like you, Alan, but <laughs> people like yourself <laughs> that. You're, you are, you, your finger seems to be so much on the pulse that you are, you're as, you know, to bring back an old term, hip to the groove. <laughs> and, and I don't feel that way. I feel like I can't find the fucking pulse. I'm looking everywhere and I can't find the real pulse. I'm like, is that it? No, that's a fake pulse. Uh, no, no, that's a fake pulse too. So how do you stay on target? <clears throat> I don't lose my sense of humor. I do a lot of research. Yeah. I don't just do academic research. I go out in the field and I follow the synchronicities. And I listen to the still, quiet voice of the secret chiefs. And that identifies for me what is coming from the Black Lodge, and that mm. gives me the encouragement that I need, but I also know that we live in a dark time, mm. and if we don't correct for it at some point, it will be a planet with 5,000 people uh, uh, playing out their lives in the rubble. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't intend for that to happen to the very limited extent that I can do anything about it and what I have done about it yep. right here. There you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's that's what I, I mean, I, I, I. I Knowledge I, is yeah. antiseptic. Yep. And it's, I like and that. We live, I like that. When you live in a uh, toxic environment, yeah. antiseptic is what you need. Mm-hmm. So I, I like that better than knowledge is power because mm-hmm. automatically when you say power, I think corrupts mm-hmm. and yes. I think it's much better. As you said, knowledge is the antiseptic because it really does. I mean, it sheds light where light needs to be shed. Knowledge does information truth. I mean, it's it, it, that, that is the only 
That is the, and I mean, I'm so hungry for it. I mean, I, I try and read as much as I can. And as I said, I kind of get lost in of like knowing what's what, but, um, but I try so hard to keep, you know, in it to see what's coming because, you know, I don't, I don't want to get blindsided. I think that's kind of, I would imagine the same with you. Like you don't want to be blindsided. You don't want other people to be blindsided. Hence you're raising the flag, you know, and you're like, look guys, this is coming you know, be prepared and who here's who's doing it. And I had not heard anybody talking about Black Lodge. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Mark sent me, uh, w- you know, we had both been looking at the list of the books and uh, and uh, the Black Lodge. And I was like, what is that? Yeah, you know, new book. <laughs> yeah. And I was thinking, I mean, I figured it, it, I thought it was something attached to the Freemason and, and things. So, I mean, I was semi on track, but, uh, but it's, you know, what gets me is the labels, the terms, and the other names that are floating around. No one ever says Black Lodge. They talk about Black Rock. They talk about the mm-hmm. Illuminati. They talk about the WEF. They talk about the UN, and these are all the enemies, and da 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 And but but uh, But basically, you're saying, like, the Black Lodge is the umbrella corp. Yeah, exactly. It yeah. is the umbrella literally outside of the system but that reaches into it and greases the palms that they need to grease yeah. and destroys a lot of people's lives one way or another by whispering in the ears of the woke. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And whispering in the ears of the MAGA people. White people are doomed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah. waiting for them to, I challenge you. Yep, mm-hmm. yep. Meet me at dawn with your sex. <laughs> That's right. That's, That's right. So I like Star Wars, you know? Yeah. Like, like the dark side and the light side, really. Yep, yep, you know, very the much fo- so. The Force, oh, too. The Force, I, yeah. No. I think that, that science fiction, the best of science fiction, has definitely tapped into the current that I see in reality going on. I mean, I, I don't derive my ideas from science fiction. Mm-hmm. There's not, uh, with the exception of a little section that quotes uh, Aleister Crowley, and I'm not sure which side he was on, and I'm not <laughs> sure he was sure yeah. which side he was on. <laughs> yeah. I think he was on uh, the side of power. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that is, that is definitely true. But whether yeah. he actually so to speak, metaphorically sold his soul to the devil or not. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. Uh, I think he liked himself too well to <laughs> sell his soul even to the devil. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But um, yeah, self-importance is a driving force, and the Black Lodge looks for that and says, we can do something with that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but, potential. Uh, so I have a lot of angry people that, reach out to me and they're angry about what's going on in the world. You know, as you had said, they see, as you do, a lot of darkness. The difference is, is kind of like me, they don't know who to point the finger at. They don't know who the enemy is. They see enemies everywhere. And I I find that really dangerous uh, because if you see enemies everywhere, you're just going to start shooting, Mm -hmm. you know, and and, uh, then you're going to hurt. As as frequently happens these days. Yes. Yet another symptom. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, uh, people that are just fringe people that probably if somebody gave them a kind word earlier in life yeah. mm-hmm. and didn't stick a, a 30 odd six in their hand sure, yeah. <laughs> when they were four or five, yeah. uh, probably would not have uh, gone postal, as they used to call it back mm-hmm. when it was only at yeah. the post office <laughs> and at the Denny's. <laughs> I don't know why those two places. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. It was never though. the Waffle House. <laughs> yeah, One of my right. sons was working at the Waffle House, and he said, Dad, people keep coming in there with a gun strapped on their <laughs> hip. And I say, son, let me give you a gun strap it on the hip. <laughs> Deterrence That's yep, right. It's right. always a good thing. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know, these people, they, they, you know, they reach out to me and they say they're really angry at the world and, and they're scared. You know, like I, I've got some supporters of the show, some friends of mine that they're scared about the state. They got small kids. I got a, a 
friend of mine that's, you know, just had a baby not that long ago. And he's terrified, you know, hits me up all the time. And it's like, dude, this world, I, I'm so scared for my son to be in this world. So my question is, is this, what do you say to people on how to stay positive? Because it's one thing to be able to have this knowledge that these groups like the Black Lodge exist and are manipulating and all that stuff. But that's the bad news. So, like, how do you how do you counter that? What's the good news that we can give to people that say, well, now here's what you can do to, A, relieve your own stress, you know, and darkness and not be so doom and gloom, but also, like, maybe use some solutions. Like, how can we... What can we do? Uh, you know, not all of us can be amazing, prolific writers like you are, Alan. So, so you know, who, what do, I'm a dumbass. What do I do? How, <laughs> you know, like, what do we do? Those of us that are just kind of watching and observing and like, fuck, you know, what, what do we, what can we do? Well, you can follow the synchronicities and if you're open to them, they will start to come in. If you don't believe me, watch. Yeah. You know how the classical, uh, I guess it was, uh, well, he's long gone now, but uh, Reverend Stranges oh. used to start his talks with, people ask me, how do you see a flying saucer? And my answer to that is, look up! <laughs> <laughs> and I when I first heard that to a really large audience because Frank was your oily Protestant clergyman <laughs> yep, yep almost a caricature of himself yeah <laughs> yeah Valiant Thor uh, right he wrote yeah. uh, Stranger in the Pentagon well that, yeah uh, that was early in his career yeah yeah, yeah. but he was a regular hellfire preacher too. Mm -hmm. And when he said that, I thought that really is the answer to that question. Mm -hmm. If you want to see flying saucers, you need to stop looking at the dirt yeah. and start looking at the sky. Sure. And that's a good metaphor for exactly what I'm trying to tell you. Okay. And it is interesting that over your shoulder is a, a traditional flying saucer with a that's beam. Right. Coming yep. out of it. That's right. Yep. Gotta so, keep it old school. Yep. <laughs> uh, avoid Ashtar, but listen to Ra. Okay. There ain't no god named Ra, and Ashtar, for all of its pretenses, is just another demon. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, I should say so that uh, my, if any of my fans, all four of them, <laughs> <laughs> as many as happen we have. to be. <laughs> to be watching and or listening and or anything. Yeah. I should say, I don't think this is entirely a product of government disinformation because it predates not only the existence of the CIA, sure. this is discussed in the book, but also it predates the existence of the United States of America. Sure. It, yeah. preda it predates any civilization you care to mention in Europe. It is... You will find traces of UFO and UFO beings and uh, uh, the manifestations that we are all all too familiar with without really knowing what they mean. Going back to the earliest shamanic stories that predate the civilizations of uh, Sumeria or Sumer and uh, uh, what was it called in India? Mahenjo Daro. Oh. I mean, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree with you. I mean, look, and I, I should specify as well. You know, I, I agree with you. At, you know, going back into antiquity, I agree with you. The phenomenon exists. Mm -hmm. I'm not arguing that. What I'm arguing is, I think the modern UAP topic. Oh, and even the term UAP yeah, was a disinformation. Yeah, exactly. Because UFO talks about objects, yeah. you know, something that has a, an underlying reality. That's right. A yeah. phenomena can be something that has a reality 
or doesn't have a reality. Mm -hmm. Also, it's a really bad acronym. I agree. Yes, it is. Yep. 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 UAP. Yeah, I agree. It's, <laughs> it's, it's terrible. Are there <laughs> UFOs out there? I'm not Serling, and I want to say, yes, there are. Yeah. Are there UAPs out there? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think the modern UFO UAP topic is what is is false. Mm -hmm. I think the phenomenon, again, going back to antiquity, at, you're absolutely right. Predating the U.S., all that stuff. We, there was no way that technology uh, from any government was being applied. I, I don't believe that at all. Um, but definitely now, I think it could very well be a possibility. Um, so. I, do, I don't want to put all of ufology in disrepute because ufology sure, has, sure. is sort of my first gig. You yeah, know? yeah, and, sure, of course. I mean, you always think about your first love. <laughs> yeah. The, the back seat of... No. <laughs> I said, your favorite song is always what was playing on the radio when you right. climbed into the back seat. That's right. Just you and Stanton Friedman getting it on. <laughs> Actually, I have sat in the back of a cab with Stanton Friedman. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. And when I was done, he kissed me on the cheek. <laughs> no, he didn't. That would be more like the Amazing Randy. It's a different story. Uh, oh, yeah. No, <laughs> Stan two, was right? interested in my government sources uh, on mm. who was the, uh, uh, the other Jewish guy who was anti-UFO, um, Class, Phil Class. Oh, Phil Class, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he said, I think Phil Class is a plant. Use your government sources, Alan. <laughs> okay, okay, Stan, that's that's good. Yeah. Roswell, right, Roswell. <laughs> and find out if he is, I don't know what he said, Russian spy or whatever, and I thought... Uh, Phil Class uh, couldn't spy for the Boy Scouts, you know. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. He was uh, he was a he was an abrasive uh, skeptic that uh, that was uh, really an interesting character. Yeah, but you know, if you sat down with these people, that's very much like what you were talking about in society, or we were talking about about groups of people hating each other. Yeah. If you sat down and had lunch with him yeah. or with the amazing Randy or any of the other psychop people, Bob Schaefer, any of those people, if you're not in an adversarial situation, which is hard to do over lunch <laughs> unless it's vegan versus steak and potatoes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the probability is they're perfectly affable people. Yeah, Randy would sit at the table and make the salt shaker disappear. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. Phil class, non sequitur to anything we were talking about would start in. You're probably asking what Phil class believes. <laughs> And I thought, he talks about himself in the third person, but that's okay. <laughs> that's a red flag. That's a red flag. <laughs> okay, let's see. Okay, I'll bite. What does Phil Class believe? He said, well, I have one foot in Reform Judaism. Well, that's my cult. I mean, my religious back. And one foot in the Unitarian Church. And I said, what's the difference? <laughs> And he shut up at that point. But, uh, I mean, he was, he was trying to be affable, but he's mm -hmm. a loud mouth person of interest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As so we what, say in the... So, so, back to the good news. So, the good news is to look up. And everything that that implies. Yeah. If you want to find the silver lining, look for it. Yeah. Look for that. If you want to hear... The latest doom mongering from whatever the next QAnon thing will be, you'll find it. Yeah. But if you want to find the silver lining, it will come from some unexpected place. I'd like to think it comes from my books, but <laughs> unlike Phil Class, I eliminated my ego 
during my ascension to the fourth I better stop doing that. Somebody's going to believe me. And start, start bringing me baskets of fruit. And of right. course, there will be people who will be nailing a cross together. You know. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> yep, that's right. Both sides. Yep. Well, that's the thing is that that's what I, you know, we, we've had conversations with people um, that we're convinced the world's going to end in 2025 oh, <laughs> yeah. and they're sure of it, you know, and they've wrote books about it and they, it they can't be true. It ended in 2012. Yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> well the known. That's, over, right. Right? <laughs> that's well yeah. known. That, yeah. We're in a, we're in a fake timeline. <laughs> this is the matrix. This is man. the simulation. That's right. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, this is all the simulation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For example, neither one of you have a body or arms. <laughs> nope. No, nope. yeah, don't bother me. <laughs> no, nope, pure. Nope. I'm just. Nope. Just shoulders. Just. Sh I'm an amputee today. That's what I. That's what I, I. I was like, you know, I feel like being winged. Yeah, we're we're beamed up. Right that's now. right. We're beamed up into our spaceship. But yeah, I mean, that's that's I. I get what you're saying. It, you know, I tell people, I say, look, I, I I live in a quiet neighborhood. You know, and the world is so noisy. You look out there, you look on social media, you look at the news, you look at all, and it's so loud. It's so angry. But I go out and I walk along this little dirt road that's a, a, a little ways from my house, and it's peace. It's quiet. There's no wars. There's nobody fighting. There's nobody arguing about which bathroom to use. There's nothing. None of, none of those topics, nobody gives a shit about. I've never been walking down the sidewalk and have somebody yell at me because of, for whatever reason, that seems to happen everywhere else. And that's what I tell my friends and the people that, hit, that, that reach out to me is I say, just pull yourself back in from this to, your, your rubber band is too extended. You know, you're trying to encompass the whole world's problems into your own life. Just shrink that rubber band back in to what you can see and look at that world that's around you. Is it chaos? As is, is what's being portrayed out there? No. So focus on that. Focus on your own family's potential, your potential. You know, and don't, I mean, look, there's only so much you can do, but I guarantee you that what you're going to accomplish by being angry at the world and all of its problems is that is going to bleed out of you and into your environment, which is only going to breed more problems and more negativity. And you're just going to continue on that spiral until you either hit rock bottom or you pull your head out of your ass and realize, <laughs> like you said, Negative look energy. up and find that silver lining. You know, that's what you got to do. And, and so it's, uh, but it, it's, I feel like it's important to it to remind because it's it's easy to talk about the negative things going on because it's so prevalent, you know, and that's what I like to always remind people of, of like, yes, there's a world of darkness that's going on. And yes, you should be aware of it. And yes, you should prepare yourself for whatever scenario may happen. But at the same time, don't lose hope. Mm -hmm. Don't lose. Oh, yeah. Don't lose perspective. Uh, in. uh not and don't lose blood. your sense of humor, as you said. Yes. <laughs> In Secret Cipher, the Euphonauts, there's uh, a section that I uh, I may have done the correction. It's a long time ago. I may yeah. have done the corrections on it, but it, uh, it was inspired by uh, Star Trek, the, the Next Generations, mm -hmm. and uh, was written by a then friend. And obviously a then friend is a then friend. <laughs> but uh, that one section, I think it's called Law of the Battle of Conquest, which is, I'm probably mangling it now as I recede from it, but that's from uh, Crowley's sacred book, the Book of the Law, Liber Alba Legis. Um, it uh, glams on the notion from Star Trek The Next Generations, the second iteration of the TV show, where the Borg is introduced. Yes, yes. And the Borg is intelligent machines that wants there to be nothing but intelligent machines. Kind of like the guy that bought Twitter, but we won't mention it. <laughs> <laughs> 
put it put the thing on your head that says that's He's right man yeah that's, that's right we'll all become <laughs> mr coffees yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're percolating <laughs> that's right that's right Hi, Mr. Musk. We bow unto thee. <laughs> yes, Give exactly. you bananas. No, um, <laughs> Give you bananas. <laughs> the the phrase that the Borg used from any being taken over by the Borgs was resistance is futile. Mm-hmm. And using the euphonaut cipher, and I think I did the cipher work, uh, if you analyze it, it basically winds you up with the notion. I'm probably garbling my own book, but that's okay. <laughs> that's because okay. The, me- the message is, is not garbled, yeah. which is resistance is never futile. Yeah, yes. that's right. And that, that's kind of the point. What this book is, is resistance because it's antiseptic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And whenever you get the opportunity, and if you are looking for the opportunity, it will manifest. Yeah. To apply antiseptic, the jug of Lysol will appear. <laughs> Just put your finger on the trigger and start pumping. Yeah. Well, that's it. I mean, that's 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 great. I love it. I love it. I mean, that's that's what I don't want to do. Is I don't want to lose hope, and it's very easy to be angry these days. It's there's a they're giving us a ton of reasons. So, I mean. You can look in any direction and find something to be angry about. But as you said, resist. And it's not just resist control. It's resist negativity. Resist anger. Resist impulse to lash out. Resist the the you know the negativity of looking at everyone suspiciously and thinking and you know, because look, there's othering going on everywhere. As you had pointed out, on both sides, everyone is othering each other. And they'll say, oh, this side's othering. We don't do that. But they, that, they're that they doing that. And so we have to pull out of that. And and that's why I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big advocate for look at things for the propaganda that it is and don't get swept up by the flood. Try and rise above it. And, Bingo. Yep. And that's the best thing you can do. So, uh I that appreciate. is resistance. Exactly. It's not armed resistance. It's not glamorous. Yeah. But that mm-hmm. is resistance That's right. to the tide of history, which is running in the wrong direction. And by saying it's running in the wrong direction, that's not correcting it. But by saying, I'm going with the flow, not with the, uh, the counter flow. I'm yeah. not damming the river. I'm blessing it. That's right. And as you had said, as you had said, follow the synchronicities. That is your way of directly being informed by the secret chiefs. There are other ways. and Sometimes they will tap you on the shoulder just because they do for their inscrutable reasons. But if you follow the synchronicities, uh, for lack of a better term, you're on the path. And you can never go wrong as long as you follow them, even if they take you somewhere where you really think you don't want to go. Mm -hmm. And the best lesson for that that's available as a public thing is Hellier. Field investigators who background experience was in ghost hunting. Yeah. Who start out to find goblins and a guy in Kentucky, right? And wound up following the synchronicities and yeah. getting so much more. Yes, yeah, so even much a balloon more. or two. It was a fascinating, fa- hell year season one, phenomenal show, and uh, yeah, it's it's amazing synchronicities. I Alan fucking Greenfield. <laughs> Thank you. That's you, dude. Thank you. Thank you. I love you so much, man. I love your work. Uh, I I love your perspective. I just I love it all, man. And I am truly, truly honored 
uh, that you you joined us on the show for the second time. I mean, I couldn't believe it. I got you the first time. I'm I'm just so so thankful and so honored to have you again. And uh, and I I I sincerely hope that it is uh, far sooner than ten years that yes. we get to talk again. <laughs> Um, I don't want to wait that long. So, uh, so anyways, uh, what, what have you, uh, aside from your new book, uh, the secret of black lodge, which I just love everything you gave us for that. Um, what else have you got going on, man? Uh, well, one thing I've been pledged to silence on, so I can't oh. tell you, but, but you will know about it when it manifests. Okay. It isn't my doing, but I've, a secret was shared with me and I will, uh, respect the privacy of those okay. who inform me. Can the you give us some hints? Is, nope. <laughs> Damn it. Okay, all right. Everybody asks, so I'm probably, this is the last time I will even say that I don't know something. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> really? Okay. I don't know anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no hable, I hable, <laughs> okay, sworn to secrecy, but something is coming. <laughs> something is coming. All right, I'm going to think uh, nude portraits. <laughs> Am I on the right track? Uh, you're very close. Oh, I knew it's, it! <laughs> AI. Friday the 13th coming up. Nude portraits of AI. all AI. the women that I think are really, really hot. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Are in the movies, but never do need see. Okay, great. <laughs> so I say go through X, X's. <laughs> yep. Hey. Somebody's going to get this idea, and I'm really going <laughs> to Might as well be you. <laughs> well, let me be the first to say, God bless you, yes. Alan Greenfield, for taking on this endeavor. God bless you, because I can tell you right now, I think there's a lot of people whose prayers you're going to answer. Yes. Okay? I think there's a lot. No, no, no. Now I'm God. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. He said it. Yeah. Hit that guy with yeah, the light. yeah, hit me with the lighting. Don't take out Alan Greenfield. He's on a he's on a holy quest. The other thing is, I'm toying with the idea that all I'm not happy with the stuff that we couldn't include in the book simply oh, because okay. it would have been too long and mm -hmm. therefore uh, priced out of the market that I'm aiming for, which is just about anybody that you know. Sure. That buys books or that reads, <laughs> yeah, which yeah, is a diminishing group of people. Uh, I, I'm toying with the idea of doing a short book mm -hmm. that consists of those things that I didn't include: okay. the death cults, the uh, the sort of mini history of the ufologists and others who have died in the. Uh, course of investigations under very suspicious circumstances yes mm. yes um which there are numerous mm -hmm. oh yes numerous. some of them i knew uh, oh okay and uh the average age was 45 yeah Dang. and what statistically that is very suspicious uh just as the number of people that vanish without a trace every year worldwide it's a staggering yeah, yeah. I so, mean, it's in the tens of thousands. Yeah. That's a lot of disappearing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Have you ever thought about doing, because, you know, there's some people that will do, like, fictional stories. They'll take, like, a story like the Black Lodge type thing, a topic like that, and they'll write a fictional story that is surrounded by truth. You know what I mean? So that way they can, because these days it seems like the fictional tales get attacked less mm -hmm. than somebody coming out with a nonfiction, just blowing the whistle if, as it were. So have you ever thought about doing like a, a fictional quote unquote, uh, like storyline, but with all this knowledge that Drops you have, that, yeah, that kind of yep. takes a, to where a main character is discovering instead of, uh, have you ever thought of doing that? I've done that. You have? Which one? It's it's the only one that's not in print oh. by my by my uh, request. Oh, because uh, the fictional material in it is in the form of Hasidic eighteenth uh, century stories, but mm. it it covers a long period of history. But 
the book itself is mainly focused on the writings of Frederick Hodge. And I don't know. It's just not where I'm coming from now. Okay. So sure. I asked. Sure. But the material was, you know, maybe that I could include that in something else as long as I label it fiction. Like there's yeah. there's one piece in there about uh, that is based on things that really happened, some of which were happened to me. Mm. or, um, But that is projected backwards in history to General Patton entering Czechoslovakia at the end of World War II with the instructions, stay where you are with the Third Army, the Russians get Prague. Well, in my story, he takes a jeep, goes into Prague, goes to the Oslo Synagogue in what is euphemistically known as the Jewish Quarter, i.e. the ghetto, uh, uninhabited by that point, goes to the attic, this is all stuff that I did, which is, according to legend, where uh, the mystic rabbi, the Maharal, conjured up the golem. Mm-hmm. So, Interesting. All of those are non-fictional ideas that I put into a fictional story because as sure. far as I know, Patton never got that far because mm-hmm. his orders were otherwise. And, yeah. Interesting. Uh, um, but yeah, I, 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 I haven't written a lot of fiction. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I could, it just seems like there's so much to say in a non-fictional context. Yeah, oh, of that, course, yeah, yeah. I was just curious. I've, ha- I've seen other authors that were, you know, took a subject that is true, but then they put it to a fictional storyline, kind of carrying it out to conclusion in a way. The closest I I come to that is uh, my eldest son uh, is a screenwriter, and uh, most of his movies are very Roger Corman influenced. There, Mm. uh, maybe a bit of Lovecraft and a bit of Roger Corman, but his most recent movie, um, uh, he came to me and asked me some things about Jewish mysticism and exorcisms as it is practiced in. Hasidic mm. mystical circles because you know he grew up around uh, somewhat more enlightened versions, not the guys with the hats and stuff. But uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, he incorporated that into his movie, which I think is a good movie. And can you name called, the movie? Oh, okay. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, I can name it. Yeah. I mean, it's I. I think it's called Lullaby. Oh, okay. It's available on Blu-ray and compact disc. <laughs> <laughs> but also, I think it's on, uh, I mean, most of his movies. This was one of the things I think the writer's strike was about. Mm. They don't get paid. What They get paid a lot if they sell a script to a major studio. Mm. Yeah. But they don't get paid for the residuals when it winds up on exactly. TV. Unless... They have a contract that's specifically for that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I may be garbling this. I'm not in the union, but he is. And yeah. uh, I believe that's and, what it is too. I think from what I've read, that's what the argument is. Yeah. And on most of those uh, platforms, virtually all of his movies are there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you can look him up under his his uh, what do they call it? Discography. Oh, yeah, discography, yeah, yeah. Yeah, his name is Alex Greenfield. Oh, okay. (laughs) And, uh, I mean, he he works under the pen name Alex Greenfield. (laughs) Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, But uh, uh, this particular movie, I can see a touch of uh, informed influence, which I can attribute to any things that he asked me, or just growing up around this stuff because yeah. mm-hmm. he grew up saturated with this kind of shit. <laughs> yeah. And that's yeah. what he does. Lovecraft and Roger Corman. That's awesome. So, uh, 
what do you, I mean, what are you going to do? What do you, what do you, what else do you, is there any, uh, where can we direct people to find your, of course, your books are all over Amazon. They're all over. I mean, a ton of websites you can find uh, your books. They're everywhere. But um, is there specific places you want uh, people to go? We'll put everything in the show notes. Um, they can buy from all of the places where fine books are sold. Okay, perfect, <laughs> perfect. But we, uh, uh, I, I got yelled at about this by my publisher. Oh, um, oh. <laughs> we, he, we prefer <laughs> that you get it from Amazon. Okay. Wherever you happen to be, apparently Amazon UK, Amazon Brazil, yeah. Amazon, yeah, Amazon, yeah. they all have it. And that is the only place, to the best of my knowledge, not having anything to do with, you know, printing or distribution or those mm-hmm. inscrutable things. I just write. Um, you, Amazon is owns Kindle. Ergo, yeah. you can only get the the cheaper version on yeah. Kindle if you have a Kindle machine or something that will adapt that uh, for a lot less money than the other one. Yeah, uh, I, yeah. Uh, I mean, I always appreciate a royalty check. <laughs> <laughs> sure, of course. Well, yeah, but, I think Audible is owned by Amazon, yeah, is, so yeah. yeah, I mean, all that. So, but they haven't invited me to do a book. I did have one person who's into that ASMR stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Saying she was going to read the entire secret cipher of the Euphonauts. But she wanted to know what sound to make with it. And I said, how about the sound of chalk on a chalkboard? <laughs> <laughs> that'll wake people up. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Yeah, that, that'll yeah. capture people's attention yeah. for sure. Yeah. That's great. So go to Amazon. You have a stunning collection of books. Mm-hmm. Lots to choose from. Is there one specifically uh, uh, that you think people should start with? Well, in fairness, and this does sound like it sounds wrong, but it's true. You, uh, the Black Lodge book, can be read as a standalone thing if you haven't read any of my other shit. Oh, okay. I mean, my great <laughs> works, <laughs> but it would be profitable to you if you are seriously interested in the subject. If you read the other two books in the trilogy and read them in order. Which would be the secret cipher of the Euphonauts and and then the complete super cipher or secret cipher. It depends on whether you're a perfectionist or not. You can get secret cipher, the Euphonauts, it's in print again. Uh, Secret Rituals of the Men in Black is a standalone book and then read the Black Lodge book or Uh, you can save some money by uh, getting the complete Secret Cypher of the Euphonauts which is both of the previous hmm. books and who knows someday we may enfold Enfold, enfold this book, <laughs> which there you go. In There's... my nonpartisan way, I would like you to buy. <laughs> Don't expect a free copy. That's right. <laughs> it, get it on Amazon, or I get yelled at. <laughs> well, we don't want you to get in trouble. Yeah. So we will get it on Amazon. Well, again. Alan fucking Greenfield, thank, <laughs> yes, you. thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I cannot thank you enough. It has been a true honor, and uh, and so look, I'll I'll stay in touch with you, and uh, and hopefully we'll have you back on. Like I said, sooner rather than later. But uh, but uh, like I said, we love you and uh, wish you the best, and we will absolutely. Um, I am going to be buying a copy. I don't yeah, know I which book, too, but but I'm Lodge. definitely going to go get one, and um, and so uh, yeah, it'll be great. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm looking for the graceful way out. Oh. <laughs> You're I in know portal right now. I, oh, it's the little red thing. Okay. I'm going to hang up on you. All right. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Thank you, Alan, Thank so you. much. Uh, and again, we'll stay Let in me- touch. 
Let me know when this posts, and I'll tell I will. all four of my fans. <laughs> you got awesome. it, man. Well, yeah, and I, I know you're going to have more fans after this, so for sure. <laughs> yes. But, uh, yes, I will let you know. It should be out Sunday, but I will send you everything. Everything? Everything. <laughs> I prefer the redhead. <laughs> okay fair enough fair enough they're, they're rare, all right you know. all right i'm your favorite got it got it wait is he the redhead no. hold on a second i didn't think so i didn't think thank, so thank god for my <laughs> oh my goodness all right alan thank you so much love you man you. all right bye-bye bye-bye i believe i see militia forming tinfoil Militia. Stop, militia! The tinfoil. Militia. I joined the militia, but why would you? What do you think tap water is? It's a gay bomb, baby. Oh, yeah! Here's what we want. We want to build community. It's not just about having listeners and the download numbers. I don't give a fuck about any of that shit. I mean, I do, but I don't. But what I do give a fuck about is I give a fuck about having a great community of people, believers, non-believers, skeptics. Um, you know, if you believe in reptilians, you're on board. That's if right. you don't believe in reptilians, you're on board. Like, I just love it. I, I love it. I, I want more interaction. I want more feedback. I'm an opinionated asshole. Hey, this is your chance to be an opinionated asshole back at me. So, you know, if the show, give me your feedback. Let's do this. You know, let's, let's get a conversation going, but this is all possible. Thanks to the tinfoil militia members that make this podcast possible. I mean, they keep it going. I mean, I mean, I'd be doing this thing if I was, you know, alone in a tunnel, but <laughs> it makes it a lot easier with supporting fans and people that love the show. Thank you so much. And that's the tinfoil militia members. Um, and once a month, we give them their due in name because their, their, uh, their memberships come through and we appreciate it so much. But on top of that, guess what? If you don't want to sign up on Patreon, for the membership that way, you can go and you can donate direct to us via the, the website, UFO no podcast.net. And uh, from there, you can access, uh, we have a whole thing about value for value and a whole bunch of different ideas of how you can donate, whether it's, you know, I mean, we've got people that donate 10 bucks a month. 20 bucks a month, a dollar a month. I mean, one of the, one of the OGs, Aaron Rice from the very get go, very small, amount of money that she donates every month, but it's every fucking month. And she comes through for like two years, three years, some shit like that. I love it. Any amount means the world to me. So getting involved, don't be a boner, be a donor, you know, get involved. We want to build community. There's numerous ways you can do that. Value for value is what we're looking for. Time, talent, or treasure. Adam Curry, no agenda show. Uh, John C. Dvorak, these guys, they perfected and, and initiated this whole thing of like, look, we don't like advertisers. We don't like the mainstream way of doing this. So we're going to, we're going to, you know, rely on, uh, producers as they call them. And that's what producers do. They support the podcast or uh, any show that they do that they fund movie, TV show, whatever in time, talent or treasure. Generally they have the money to fund it. And then they're bringing in people that they know or time or whatever it is. We're looking for the same thing. Time could be anything artwork, it could, which that falls under talent as well, mm -hmm. but it could be tips. It could be, uh, if you know somebody who you think would be cool to have on the podcast, hit me up. Uh, if you have stories, you have experiences, you have any of that, that's time. Uh, you can donate that to us. Talent would be like our friend Casey Armadillo, who also supports the podcast through treasure, but he's like, Hey, I can do merch for you guys. I would love to help you do custom stuff. Let me know. And so he helps us with that. And then of course the easiest one is treasure. Whatever this podcast means, whatever value that we provide to you, we don't know what this podcast means to you, and I don't want to presume what it means to you. So I'd rather whatever whatever value you get out of this podcast, turn that into a number, throw it back our way. It's simple as that. Get involved. We want to build community. We also have our Discord that you can go to, um, which I'm trying to get popping off. I got a spot there that you can add your encounters. If you have stories you want to add in there, do that. I'm going to be adding in our Alex, uh, I think Keeter or Stein or whoever the, whatever the name was, I can't remember now that wrote us a, a whole thing about, um, being in a firehouse and all the fire oh, yeah. retardant yep. stuff catching on fire. <laughs> but then also a whole experience about seeing a UFO. And, um, so anyway, so put your experiences on there. I've also got a spot for AI artwork. 
which is, I mean, why not? There's so many yeah, places cool. you could do AI artwork. Yeah. I got some, some artwork that I put up there that I thought was cool. Um, and then of course there's the clubhouse where you could just join in. You could say whatever the fuck you want. You can add in, you can, you know, add to the conversation of the show ideas, whatever you want to do, but that's where we're trying to build community as well as the UFO, no podcast.net. And so, but that's really what it's about is, is building community, building it up, supporting the show helping us out, keep this thing going and not only going, but growing. That's right. That's right. I want to be, I want to be a grower, not a not shower. A shower. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. You know what I mean? Well, no, wait a minute. Wait, is I want to be both. I wanna, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm already a grower, not a shower. I want to, I want to be a shower. Whatever Damn it is, it, we're growing. <laughs> That's right. But we're growing. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Anyways, uh, again, <laughs> be a donor not a boner get involved Tin Foy militia we have fun and uh, you can too just get involved be a part of this and I, I love every single one of you so uh, as this episode we try and do there's a lot, of neg- a lot of negativity out there and it's easy to get wrapped up don't get swallowed up by it remember yes. take a breath take a look around you at your family the world you know the life that's right in front of you and remember chances are you probably don't have it that bad. I don't know your situation, but I chances are you probably don't have it that bad. So take it in for what it is. As Alan Greenfield says, look for the silver lining and follow the asynchronous. Look up in the sky. That's right. Look <laughs> up. And as I always say, keep your eyes to the skies. Yep. Stay elevated. And remember, watch out for the government. They're choice <laughs> bastards. Peace out, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.